Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Lightbringers Podcast, episode number 37. Yeah. I am your host, Jebro. Twitch.tv slash Jebrouni. Come and watch every Friday, especially as we lead up to the uh, expansion launch of End of Dragons, which we know is now the 28th of February, which is the last day of the month. <laughs> it's not a leap year. <laughs> Because if it was a leap year, it would be the 29th, which would be even more interesting, wouldn't it? Ooh. It means it would be later in the month. It, I tell you what, if it if there was if it was a leap year, I guarantee you they yeah. would have launched it on the 29th. And it yeah, would have just sure. been, you know, And like, that would have been a Tuesday. That would have been great. Oh yeah, it would have been a Tuesday. Well, yeah. I, well, no, actually that may be different because leap years in the past would have been on different days. And actually the days would shift, Kruf. It's too early for this. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's 1 p.m. on the West Coast. That's too early. Okay. Well, that's a good point to talk about what time this podcast is on weekly. 12 p.m. Pacific on a Friday. And for some people, that's 7 a.m. in the morning, isn't it, Rava? Yes. <laughs> Feels great. It was that early for you. I didn't realize. It's okay. I have coffee. We're good. Yeah, I just got my coffee. I just completely forgot I had coffee. Um... Okay, let's do intros. That's a good idea. We've just done the uh, Kainang City first uh, look with Guildchat, Ruby, uh, and the peeps showed us around the map, so we're going to talk about that. We're also going to show it a little bit on the uh, stream as well, so if you've got visuals available, awesome. Um, we have Kruf. Kruf, hello. How are you? Tell us a little bit about yourself, and also, if you were sitting on the docks, because I, I did this question last week, but I'm going to do it again, and there were going to be animals around you. Which one would I kill? <laughs> Which animal would you most like to kill? Which would you, <laughs> animal would you most like to pet and oh. not kill from Tyria around your person? Because that's I no see. hint as to what happened in the stream whatsoever. I see, I see. <clears throat> well, thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be back. My name's Kroof. I do a lot of YouTube stuff, and I'm over here on Twitch Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. And sometimes Saturdays when I'm training raids. Thank you so much for having me back. I always had a lovely, lovely time here. But um, if I were to pet a creature on the docks, mm, I would probably say like Deimos. Like he's really cute. A lot of hands. So, you know, there'd be like a lot of hand action going on. And I'd be able to like caress the hands. Is Deimos and... a pet? Yeah, he's my pet. I have I guess a power Deimos complex. Is, a mi- is De- Deimos a mini pet in the game? I, I, don't I didn't even. I, I want to anticipate. Pet. I want to pet a pet that can also pet me back. I need that reciprocation. You need oh, many but hands here's on Here's the question okay. now, though. If Deimos lays his many hands on you, won't that just lead to death? No, uh, I have agony resistance. You're very funny, oh, okay. Rick, by the way. I do cry. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks, Deborah. When you say it like that, it makes me feel like I definitely am. Thank Stop you. Stop patronizing. You're very funny. Wow. I think this is a good option. My British heritage thanks you. <laughs> or, hey, I guess Samurai is also a pet, so either or. It's fine. <laughs> We're still talking about the pets. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Hopefully it doesn't reciprocate though, Kruf, because the spears into you might not feel too good. Oh, that's true, actually. <laughs> they are big. There are many as well. Uh... I don't know. Kruf might be into it. <laughs> that's true. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> I was still too... Yep. What's that therapy called with the with the thingamajigs? Acupuncture? Yeah, it's just like a more extreme version. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Debro. Back in medieval times, they were just playing acupuncture with giant needles. Yeah, I mean, you know, just don't. We're just trying to downplay it a little bit. Yeah, and your physician was a giant raid monster. That yeah. Okay. <laughs> Frankenstein's a thing, I guess. Okay, Rook is back. There is a hype train going on in the chat. Yes, there's an important thing. Uh, <laughs> Rook is returned. <laughs> Uh, how are you doing, Rook? Also, same question, as well as tell us about, about yourself. Yeah, no one's heard of you before on this, on this podcast. No. You and Chris. Unfortunately, I am back again. And <laughs> oh, uh, I, you know, I didn't think that today I would be facing so much personal uh, sass 
and smarm, <laughs> smarminess, general smarminess from Jebro. But here we are, and you know what? I accept this fate, so fine. Yeah, hi everybody, I'm Rook. I am really funny, as Jebro puts it. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm a content creator, uh, both on Twitch and YouTube now. Uh, you can find me at Rookery, R-O-O-K-U-R-I, wherever I am. Uh, except for Twitter, where there's an underscore afterwards. I kind of took a page from Kroof's book on that one, so that's where you can find me there. But, uh, yeah, I love good, wholesome, ridiculous content, and I never get spicy ever, uh, and or say thirsty things about characters in video games. So if you also don't ever do that, or if you do, please come by. Um, we hang out, we have a great time, we talk about a lot of different things in video games, but we mostly play, uh, Guild Wars 2 and Final Fantasy XIV, so that's me. Animals, this is hard, Jebro. This is hard because I want to pet every animal in all of Tyria. You can't and I have had to... them all. There's not an entire okay, zoo well, coming geez. to your side right now. There's no petting you know, I can have whatever I want, Jebro. It's not your you know birthday, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, had to, I had to pull up the list of animals in this game because I don't want to pick the wrong one. Rob was I don't like, like, this is the intro. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even in the podcast. You have, asked, it, the pressure. you have asked me a question that is so difficult for me personally because I love all animals equally. I want to pet some Tengu because I love their cute little dumb faces, especially that one that, okay, they're people, not animals, but they're hybrids. I don't know, they're anthropomorphic animal people, but the one that's the fluffy snowfinch, I very much want to pet that one so much. Um, I also, I guess, I don't know, there's just too many. The white stag's pretty cool from the story. Badgers are fun. Although why, oh, badger is a raccoon. <laughs> well, I definitely want a pet badger. Apparently you can find him in Rada Novus. There's too Rada many animals. Novus. That's how I say it. Is that don't. how you say it? Rick, don't. is that don't, how you Jeff. say it? I like that. Is that I something like that, that happens you on that. your stream? Do people, do people <laughs> remark on that, Rook? Do people, Look. do they say, <laughs> how do you say it? How do you say Look. it? Jebro, I sang in a lot of choirs growing up and and or church choirs. It was unfortunate, but I had to sing I a would. lot of Latin. <laughs> okay. I had to sing a lot of Latin. So Rata Novus is how I would say it. But when you say Rata Novu, what about what about Rava? Would you say Rata Navu? Navu? I say I say Rava Notice. <laughs> I say Pie Pocket. <laughs> Up. <laughs> That's completely wrong, Chris. Um, <laughs> wait, wait, can you just say it again? My God! <laughs> On the spot. <laughs> Rata Novus. That's how oh. I say it, okay? I'm gonna get back to the question that you asked. I pet every llama. I also very much like yaks. I think the dull yaks are adorable. I would pet them and I'd kiss their cute noses. Um, I like all of the dragon related creatures. I would just hug Orin a whole bunch and never let go. But screw the rabbits in Guild Wars 2. Those suckers, they don't deserve any Wait, pets. what? Oh, you I mean negative? Right, okay. I was like, what the fuck? Like, with some sudden effeminate with rabbits. Rabbits are amazing. Um, <laughs> don't screw the rabbits in Tyria. It's a bad idea, everyone. They just kill them like Connor does. I don't know. <laughs> Trevor, you took that in a direction that I did not. I don't even. I wasn't even. I was just thinking about that one heart where all the rabbits attack you. And I, that's why I said screw the rabbits. I did not mean screw the rabbits, Jebro. <laughs> Cut to all of us before the podcast started today. And Jebro <laughs> over here says to Rafa, we don't get that spicy on the podcast. So we don't we don't make inappropriate jokes on the I podcast. Didn't say, I didn't say anything else. I just said screw. I was, I was told to, to you not told. like, you know, my fault. Fault. It's some my... uh, weird stuff. And uh, <clears throat> it is has Rafa even fault. done her introduction? <laughs> No, we're getting there. Martha. We're getting there. I'm enjoying this. It's fine. It's because the Crichton Herald's in chat. That's why. I'm blaming. <coughs> Bird of chess. I'm oh, sorry. Rookery is a friend to all the animals. Can't even remember my name. It's fine, Jebro. Sorry. All right. You keep changing it. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Bird of, I am Bird of Chess, but you can call me Rook. Yes, cool, because that's the same. And then it's like, no, it's Rookery. God, oh, I guess, I guess so anyway. 
Rava, 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 Rava is here. I haven't put your whole name. What, do, you, do you prefer Rava or is Rava licious? Okay. I, I really like Rava, but it was taken on Twitch and I'm trying to DM the person who has it, but they haven't replied to me. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> so Rava's fine. Okay. Rava is here. <laughs> Rava is the guild boss to uh, Twitch stream and everything else. Tell us about yourself. Also, I went to find you what times roughly uh, region mm -hmm. and also the question you must answer is the one where if you had to pet an animal on the docks of Kainang City I'm not sure why they would be there specifically maybe they're visiting I don't <laughs> know. Um, but like, they might be what would it be? Uh, well first of all hi I'm Rava or Ravalicious and uh, I, I live in, in Australia so uh, I play on 250 ping most of the time 300 it's great. So nice. if you think, in uh, chat for that. <laughs> if, if you think I, I am a bad player, I am, but also the ping doesn't help. Um, and I make YouTube videos sometimes when I have time because I work full time. Um, and I stream uh, mostly for European folks because for them it's in the morning. Um, and most Americans are asleep, so I don't get to hang out with you cool people. <laughs> And uh, if I were to pet an animal, I think, okay, this is going to sound controversial. I love all animals, but I am pretty upset about how a lot of people prefer pandas to bees. And like, so they... <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! So, you know in World uh, 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 WWF, like, uh, you know this thing that saves animals? Everybody donates to freaking pandas instead of bees. And we need to save the bees. So I would pet a panda and then I would yoink it in the water because we're on the docks. And they won't survive because pandas, evolutionary speaking, shoot die because the only reason they're still alive is because humans think they're cute but we need to save the bees <laughs> i mean there are several creatures on this earth that should die in by the qualification of how i'm sorry by the qualification of how uselessly they have evolved but i do believe they should all be protected but rava i have to actually say that i too love bees I Thank adore you. bees, so I agree with you in the sense that people need to get more on the bee hype train because bees yes. are actually awesome and they're super cool. And just because maybe you get stung by them sometimes, which is a defensive mechanism that kills yes. them, like doesn't mean you should hate all bees. They're actually beautiful little creatures. I, exactly. So if I we just... gave more money to the bees, I wouldn't hate on pandas, but because everybody thinks pandas are cute and fluffy and blah blah blah, then they don't give the money to the bees, and then the pandas are still there, and they don't even know how to... Uh... Reproduce. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do the... Just... Do the... <laughs> Do the hum hum. They're never, a car now. <laughs> never in my on. life. <laughs> never in my life would I have thought that I would hear a comparative category of bees versus pandas. But didn't even it's like they don't even live in the same realm. They came. <laughs> they came from left field. Like what? From totally from left field. Like, I have it really no got idea. jabbed. It was good. It was good. I was dying inside. Oh my, I, the cough go. almost destroyed me. Well, after 10 minutes of intro, or probably longer, uh, we are going to talk about the Kainang Sea um, map tour. But also the fact that it was... I Just... Um, maybe I shouldn't put, say this right now. All right, first impressions. Uh, well, I, I went to the stream afterwards. I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, what I thought about something specific, a number. Do you want to talk EOD release trailer or Kainang City? Kainang, we just did Kainang City, so we should probably do that. That's fresh in our minds. And then we can talk about um, EOD release trailer later. If you have noticed in the last couple of videos, there are chapters now. Sometimes those chapters are aptly named, like Kruf loses it. Or oh Kruf does a thing. Or Rook is rude. <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> or Crying Yeah, if Herald you've noticed... <laughs> The chapters on YouTube, again, are a very strange and specific attack towards me. So, Trevor, I don't know what happened this past week. The one chapter that was just titled, Why Do I Have Rook on This Podcast? Please, somebody tell me to never invite her again. Felt Wait, very what? pointed, and I don't understand. <laughs> I don't think that exists, does it? Or does it? I've got to check now. 
I'm not <laughs> does sure. it or does it? Says Jebro, the one who made the chapters. <laughs> I don't know. People asked. Uh, there is the missing the mark, and then in brackets, itting, which I thought was very funny. Uh, Kruf hair issues. That was the one chapter I made. Remember when last week when you were having the hair problems? Yeah, I don't that have those. Fine. So I thought it was interesting. There is that chapter. Uh, oh yeah, there's the Rook's World v World Experience chapter. <laughs> That's so there good. is That's there nice. is some funny chapters in there. There's some good stuff. So expect <laughs> there to be many random chapters this week if I get time to do it. Okay, so we're going to talk about the Kaineng City trailer. So if you know what Kaineng City is, Kaineng City is an actual map itself. It sounds like, as long as I'm making sure that I get that right, or the majority of a map at least. There is as. Uh, Reader Geek awesomely mentioned in a DM, took a picture. There's three hearts, four waypoints, 38 points of interest, nine hero points, and five vistas. If you want to compare that to Plains of Ashford as an example, there is 18 hearts, 18 waypoints, 17 points of interest, six hero points, and 10 vistas. It's interesting how they change that around later in the expansions. More more points of interest, less waypoints, less hearts. That's good. A few more hero hearts. points. Less <laughs> oh my god, Rava, why do you say it like that? <laughs> ah, we know why Rava says it like that. <laughs> map completion. <laughs> oh, map completion. Are you not a massive fan of hearts? Oh, no. They take so long. Take There's long. 303 in Corteria, and it just takes you 700 hours. Just for the hearts. I wonder it's if it rough. does take you 700 hours. I'm doing world completion right now, and do. I'm at 96, and I still have like 40 hearts to do. <laughs> it's so bad. World completion, when I decided, I was like, oh, I'm going to do core, and then I'm going to do all the rest of the map completion on a character. I loved and discovered so many things that I genuinely had a blast with doing that. The one thing that I came away, and I was like, I never want to do another again, was the hearts. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> I hate yeah, these. Pretty like, much. Some of, them, some of them are pretty good. And I mean, there are some great little showcases of mechanics or fun little side stories or stuff like that they do have. But yeah, I don't know. I find the vast majority of them very unfun. <laughs> and some of them don't make sense. So you're trying like there's the, the one I, I think it's in Ascalon with the cows where you need to catch like a grub and give it to the cow or something. It just makes no sense. And so you're just stuck for half an hour. And it's, uh, anyways, <clears throat> I, I love Guild Wars. <laughs> you can say that you don't like parts of the game. It's okay. There's there's nothing wrong. I don't with that. like hearts. We can't like everything. I I like hearts because of the um. I think hearts is a good way of leveling up first time as a new player to the game as a as a difference to quest as in as in, as in something which is different. Because if you've watched, so there's a big um. This is interesting as well. We have big YouTuber. Uh, World of Warcraft, actually, is it Belula? Belula. 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 He's English as Bel well. Belula. And he is. <laughs> I don't know what the name means. I just I need to. I need to find out. Made a this feels great Guild Wars two video and leveled up past level ten, which got posted on Reddit. It's probably the most marketing Guild Wars 2 has had in the last week or so. <laughs> <in all> honesty, <laughs> yeah. even though the video's only got 15k views, but that will that will rise pretty heavily. Um, and was talking about that experience, and you know, said that it was very awesome. It's very unique and very different, and loves like how metas are done, and is massively praising how Arena Net have just made this very unique MMO RPG experience. Yet, no one hears about it. <laughs> Um, yeah. It actually mentions the fact that, you know, that that is part of the problem with the game. And I think it always has been, which is a shame, but it's a thing. Um, and we'll see how that ramps up towards the, the expansion. It's worth mentioning that um, the game is fantastic. We just want to see it. <laughs> And this is honestly a great opportunity for everyone to talk about it. Like, yeah. this is just a little note to throw out there, right? Um, I mean, anyone, no matter whether you're a content creator or not, can use a Guild Wars 2 hashtag. You can retweet stuff. You can go and comment on content creators' posts. You can comment on the official uh, Twitter's posts. You can comment on YouTube videos. All of those things bump stuff in algorithms and feeds so that more people see it and more things like, you know, uh, pop up in front of players, retweet those videos um, of the new trailer stuff, put them up in different discords. Like 
everybody can do this to raise the visibility of the game and talk about the areas that we love. Um, because honestly, it's like we have a new expansion. This is the perfect time to get people on board, especially with a lot of the ways that they are bringing, bringing all their experience to the table with this most recent installment. True. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, do that, please. That would be massively appreciated. So some people I know commenting on that video, so that was good. That was good to do. Um, oh, that's because people people are defensive about their MMORPGs, uh, Anodic. As well is a big creator in Guild Wars 2. Go and follow them. Give them a chuck them a follow. Go and check out the YouTube stuff. Um, okay. Let's actually talk about the stream. <laughs> Let's go do that. Uh, it was good. It was very good. It was fun. I like the kind of, I'm gonna go and actually have a look and just play in the background. I think people would appreciate that probably very much. Actually. The intro was a huge part of the stream. Uh, okay, so they showed the map tour on the 11th. There's gonna be the J Tech Mastery preview. There's gonna be music preview and the launch day. <laughs> That is very... I, I love the music, don't get me wrong, like, I love the music in Guild Wars 2. It's probably my... one of the most enjoyable things about the game for me is the soundtrack. It's very, very awesome. But... The week... All right, 10 days before the last stream, before the Ender Dragons release? Is a music preview? Yeah. A little strange, kind of. Yeah, what do we think I about would that? I would have paired that with if they were going to do a music stream, I would pair that with a concept art uh, segment as well hmm. to at least get some more of that behind the scenes situation because the music is uh, the whole production of behind the scenes, but also probably showing off some finished pieces. And music is great, but I still think having something visible and tangible to maybe pair you know, with that production of like concept concept art, what we were thinking of doing for Echo Vod Wilds, uh, what were the Jade's original concept art pieces? I think that would fit pretty well together. Uh, so it is a strange last stream yeah. before. <laughs> One thing I would mention is that here in the last like week or so, especially, I've noticed that a lot of collaborators on the soundtrack have started to reveal that they collaborated, um, including yeah. the uh, composer for Celeste soundtrack. Yeah, Lena. Which, yeah. oh my gosh, Lena, yes. like, And she has done work, I think, previously with some Guild Wars 2 oh, stuff. Oh, massively, but... yeah. She was yes, there yes. heart forms, yeah. Um, but I think maybe because they've brought some people in and there is kind of maybe going to be talk around that as well, they wanted to feature some of the music and then possibly also reach the audiences that those people have, you know? Um, so that could play into it, but I do agree, Kruf, that I would love to have seen it kind of, yes, buffed out into something that maybe did talk in a larger way about the design mentality of it to kind of get people even more hyped leading into it. Yeah, concept even, art, those like, sorts of things. Like, I don't know, for me, like, I'm very happy that we had the stream today, but it felt more like it should be the stream that should have been instead of the music stream because it's closer to launch and then have that music stream today with that concept art. Yeah, it's just, it, like, don't get me wrong, it was awesome to see, but it does feel like out of place, like, two weeks before launch. Yeah, I feel like the music is filler. <laughs> I feel like there's there's a couple yeah. of filler stream like that was a filler stream maybe it was planned to be the week before so I mean maybe <clears throat> they will st still show concept art because I, I imagine that they would have to give the music producers concept art pieces or screenshots to then pull inspiration from so uh, I think it's a no-brainer that we will maybe see some concept art pieces like hey we saw this and I was inspired by this screenshot I got mm -hmm. the tone from that um, but I am still really excited to hear more pieces from End of Dragons because the, yeah. the musical pieces that we have are so good. Yes. Really good. Oh, actually, I mean, they were being played during the stream. That was yes. one of them. But like, yeah. I'll play them in the background actually while, while, we're, uh, while we're talking about the, the things. Um, but generally, oh yeah, and there was a new background behind Ruby and actually, Someone did tweet at me something very interesting, uh, yeah, I saw which that. I didn't know. Did you yes. see that? There was a horse. horse There's a horse in the back of the behind Ruby. We looks cool. Horses which, aren't a thing. <laughs> yes, for anyone who doesn't know or is new to the game, horses like don't exist in Tyria beyond uh, centaurs, 
which technically do have an equine lower half, but actual horses i can't remember in the lore if it was that they existed at some point like they are in myth theoretically and then they vanished or that they have never existed or it could be possible that the humans brought the myth over from their world I don't, i'm not sure yeah i don't know that's oh, a new playable race I was you can just play as horses. Horse. <laughs> Damn. It's they like, said, we heard Tengu. No, 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 no. We're going to do horses. horses. Everyone can just be Bojack Horseman. That's fun. That would be work. That would be fun. Can I shatter everyone's dreams a little bit? Uh -oh. No. So that concept You just art... want to do the Tengu thing, and I'm not going to allow it. No. Tengu. <laughs> you want to the shatter concept... dreams like Ruby does. The concept <laughs> art was actually also on the official uh, launch website and it also showed a horse. However, they have since updated it and they changed it to a non-horse. So I think that's an older oh. version of the concept art that they're using as the background. In the loading screen, it's not a horse. So we won't see horses. That's, I mean, that's, that's so fair. sad. So why ah. did they put it in that? Because it's concept Cause, art. Uh, yeah, I think they contracted a concept art and they're like, there's a horse there. And then well, they were like, we don't have horses in Tyrion. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> and it's, it's fine. It's okay. There was a horse there, you know. It's a Yeah, it's a script. Oh, it's a script. That's true. It's script. It's like the one, the fic picture I tweeted out the other day where you can race script who are dressed mm. up as horses, which is, which is actually just hilarious to be fair. Oh, all right. Well, fine. Oh, that's good, actually. It's good, because otherwise we would have gone off on, like, some weird torn horse tangent, and that would have been <laughs> just odd, and they probably would have got inappropriate at some point. Um... <laughs> Horses aside, I am genuinely excited about all the music, and I will love to see everything that stream has in it, because I do think they do a phenomenal job with the soundtrack in Guild Wars 2. Yeah. And... What's so funny is that while I think that, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about the Iceburn saga, right? And its scope and scale. Some of the things that I did notice about it that were some of my highlights were the tidbits of really unique atmospheric music that we got. And some of those, oh my gosh, like I needed more. I needed 5 million times as much music, but I can't wait to see with the setting and the musical uh, sort of... Uh, range of instrumentation and inspiration uh, between all of the different countries that they are drawing from for Cantha. I can't wait to see what they do. And it'll be even, I think, more exciting if, yes, on that uh, particular broadcast, we do get a bit of them talking about that and how they realize the soundscape to kind of lead us on our journey through the expansion. So I'm looking forward to it, even if, yes, it's maybe a little bit strange to not have some sort of big feature broadcast or something, but I think it'll still be really great. I guess Plus, it's a very important part. Sorry, it's a very important part of the of of the game. Like people don't realize yeah. how amazing th that music is compared to other games. Like it's just yeah. incredible. We had the Elder Scrolls flipping composer doing Guild Wars Two core game. Like you know, I, there's no wonder it's not on Spotify. I guess because <laughs> it would just be weird. I don't think it would probably give permission. I don't know what the deal is with that. They should put it on there. Um, the music is great. It is fantastic. Uh, if you play Skyrim, by the way, and then you go and play all the, or ESO even, and then you play Guild Wars 2 core game afterwards, you're just like, it feels like the same game because just it's the same style. And they're actually like so into the Skyrim music as well. Like the music is so... I feel like some of the tracks are like almost identical in fact it's just it, it's really awesome it, it's good but I'm not sure you know anyway anyway music aside music aside let's go let's go and have a look at what the start was oh yeah the uh the plush that was cool the pin Proof yes. wants the pin oh, I've got one too I want the plushie I love that griffin plush so much I want a sky scale plush that's like that <sighs> is this gonna be on their merch store the yeah, plush is up the, there. It's, it's already up there. Just don't get caught in. It'll take to arrive it. to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, actually. Oh, come on. Where are you? Well, they showed the launch Choo -choo. trailer first, actually. We're not going to talk about the launch trailer. Uh, la, la, la. The launch trailer was good. Just by FYI, peeps. And in the go, they had Connor. They had the weird perspective table, which, which I'm sorry, we got to talk about this just for a moment. No, it's weird. It was just like a really weird moment. Actually, maybe we don't need to. 
There was a table. If you're <laughs> in the background, oh, that freaked me out. That, fr that honestly freaked me out. It was like Indigo picked up this small griffin from this, like there. It looks like it's in the background because I couldn't see the the edge on the desk, and it looked massive, yeah. right? Someone else said it. I thought I think it was Rook, and I was like, "Whoa, this thing is so big!" And then randomly, like Indigo just picks up this massive head and just like okay it was just a weird moment i'm sorry everyone oh we did you did actually <laughs> clipped it as well and it was like Whoa! I, did, I did think it was interesting that they were all at home i i don't know if they mentioned this anywhere else or anything like that but you know for these broadcasts they have been going into the studio for them but with like the resurgence with omicron i didn't know if maybe they're on like again really limited staff in there or if it's because everybody is working on stuff from their home setups and they are so in the depths of it right now that they were just like we can't come into the studio to do this i don't know but uh it was kind of fun to see them in their home settings but yeah uh, i was wondering as we went through the broadcast why they weren't in the studio it's pretty impressive that they can like do the like launching a game during those surges of like you know covid and stuff like it's just shows their dedication i was just personally hoping that like indigo has two like a corgi i was hoping the corgi would just oh. show up at some point and be like because <laughs> you can see the crate in her background <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah she's got a corgi that's right i forgot about that oh, um, so cute <laughs> they are they're awesome we did see a little bit of this was this was um this area was was really awesome what's it called again it was the zaitan what did they call it old kainang old, old kainang, kainang which answers yeah. the question because many people were wondering why do they keep referring to kainang city as new kainang mm, yeah um and we kept having this sort of like you know little f bump in like lore discussion anytime that would come up like did they just rebrand the city did they tear the old one down and then rebuild it we know like at various parts of the history like the palace burned down at some point but we didn't know that the actual city itself in zaitan's rising had been completely destroyed which is so like it was a footnote in this stream but it is a huge thing depending on how they want to spin it how if like how many people died during that how did this happen like did the previous emperor whoever was there at the time die because of something like this like when you look at those ruins it's pretty devastating it looks like everything has kind of crumbled down yeah. and probably has only gotten worse in recent years but i was really surprised i didn't expect that we'd have an old kainang zone and then that little tidbit that we got about um the land that new kainang was built on actually being um part of the lands that were tengu populated previously and that being a cause of friction for the establishment of the new city i was like oh that's juicy mm, juicy lore left and right here it also <laughs> could be interesting to see how the map has changed now that we know that the the rising of zaitan has changed the geography of the land so i think that like especially also they had mentioned in the jade sea how it's an open border zone and i was like but i thought it was like in in the mountains i felt like it was more of a of a bathtub yeah. rather than like this expanding ocean so we might actually see a, a fairly different map of cantha than we got uh in guild wars factions mm -hmm. i was looking at the um map as well specifically not map the the footage of the stream I was hoping they'd upload it on YouTube. That would be cool. Oh no, they have. Ah, sweet as I can go. I hate, I hate Twitch VOD so much. Um, they just, they just, it darkens the background. So when you bad, pause it, yeah. you can't, you can't actually look yeah. at the thing. And I want to show you something which is very cool. Um, basically, on on that area we were just on, it looks like on the wall there's like this kind of outline of like a breaking wall and it looks like something where something's gonna pop out in like a meta event or something and i was like oh well that looks cool anyway <laughs> <laughs> just look good <laughs> I was going to show you, but I'm not going to show you now. Um, also, <laughs> I can mention wow. for the, the lore reasons of Zaitan, I'm actually, when we got to test the Harbinger, I had actually noticed that when you go into Harbinger Shroud, the image of Zaitan actually pops up behind you. And I yeah. made a tweet about that a while ago, and then some developers, like, interacted with it, and I was like, ooh, is there some Zaitan mm. stuff? But I was so confused as to how Zaitan would have impacted Kantha. And now we have, like, direct answers, and even a Harbinger NPC there to give some more lore on what harbingers are so i was like 
I was very happy with that little segment about the elite specs. Because <laughs> yeah, we didn't it, get that it, before, right? We got it well, in Path we, of Fire, just not Heart of Thorns. Mm. Yeah, we yeah. It would be cool to know like how those elite specs are like come to f like to be type of thing because like it's something like especially if you're a new Guild Wars two player and you start playing the game, you're like, oh, okay, cool, I'm a mesmer, but you don't really know how you're a mesmer or anything. Like the only one that I felt has lore behind it is when the rev came into play in heart of thorn where like you go into the mist and you like harvest powers and stuff but other than that like you don't really know how you're a certain class and why and stuff so it will be really cool i agree on one hand it's nice to be able to sort of i guess in a sense make whatever you want around that you know why am i this thing and what do my yeah. abilities look like and what other examples do i have of this thing in the world but we talked about it before in the cast and i stand by it it also is kind of confusing and as somebody who avidly role plays one of the things you're first looking for is like what is this style that my character uses what is this combat style or magical technique what is the actual basis for this in the world where would they have learned it and for some classes we get a ton of examples of different things and for other classes it's like there aren't any npcs that are that or that really 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 seem to have a good context for it so I love that they put these in, and yeah. I love too, like you said, Kruf, that um, with the Zaitan connotations for the trainer to be there in that part of the city that was so devastated by Zaitan, that's awesome too. That has me super curious. And then that little mention that they did that all of the other elite specs will also somewhere around the world, if you can find them, have those kind of mentors or those characters that you can talk to. Mm, love it. Perfect. Yeah, it's going to be great important to have i think it was it was yeah it wasn't there in path of fire yeah not in half ones though they were probably just a bit too busy with the modern and they stuff. actually added a class like elite spec icon over their head which will be mm. really nice to go and locate them and i'm just like could you use this for like quest chains or something like class specific there's uh, having like lore <clears throat> yeah. and i and ui pop up i'm like quest worker Maybe it just looks really interesting. Well, I wonder if it's going to be part of their armor because like, we'll see. We have like this, yeah. there's their armor or weapon specific thing for each class, which I think people chase a lot at the beginning of the expansion or even later on classes where you're just like, oh, that would look cool. That thief helmet would look cool on my, you know, medium class, you know, wardrobe outfit thing. So you're going to go get that or you just want to get it because it looks cool. The kids, yeah. I mean, and it could be part of that as well. I hope, but it would be nice to have some kind of class quest or achievement line. I mean, there kind of is with the ascended things, but like, again, it's achievements and it's not like text a lot of the time. It's just go pick up thing, go place, do stuff, achievement, bottom right hand corner above me, etc. Okay, that so weapons. Yes. So it looks so good. Like I keep yeah. watching the the stream, and it just looks so good. The rain weapon, like you just full fledged rainbow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to commit too. to it. You have to commit to that sparkle rainbow life. Um, yes. But I personally love it. <laughs> I'm so curious, good. like. Oh, they okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the different variations, but I'm curious what kind of effects they'll have specifically. Like the, we knew that they were gonna have some kind of trailing effect here with the Orin weapon. So you have these little like crystal bursts that follow in your footsteps, which I think are really beautiful. But it'll be uh, fun to see how they reinterpret that for each of the different dragons' weapons. Yeah. Wait, yeah, so that's, that's gonna be so cool. Wait, it's sword and offhand dagger. I thought it was like focus. I think there yeah, was a sword like sword. Focus. It was a sword sword and I think a sword focus. Oh yeah, sorry, they're playing Mesmer. I don't know why I thought I saw I saw knives and I was like, look at all the eyeballs on the fire. Wait, what what the hell was that? <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's some Zaitan magic. Don't do this to me, YouTube. I was just selling you like so well. Anyway, yes. <laughs> the and when the on the um Shaz as well, on the clones, can you see the rainbow as well? Is the rainbow effect on the actual um, Mesmer oh, clones? It's projectile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. So there's the there's the oh. footfall. There's the actual effect on the weapons, and then there's the Mesmer uh, clone shares. So that's actually another thing. And then you got to think about what does it do to the other stuff. So an engineer, if you've got Predator, for example, if you've got um, Juggernaut, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, Grenade Barrage is one of those examples where that turns into something else. So if you've got Predator, which is the legendary rifle. 
it turns into like five flaming grenades basically just looks wise and just looks and the sound effect changes as well so you gotta think about all yeah. these little interactions that they do which is pretty cool right you're doing fingers oh you saying bye yeah. okay right. <laughs> I was like, oh this is the npc you're talking about wait let's pause it let's yeah. pause it let's pull it okay you're a long way from home travel to take a seat rest up just don't touch the elixirs oh yeah they're still fermenting that's awesome and then you can ask oh look that's uh, so cool you're necro. you can ask about these so this is if you're listening only and you're on itunes and everything else one go and look at the vod uh, and if you're on spotify you can see the vod um <laughs> elixirs that's really really cool so there's this npc like chris said earlier there's their icon above their head and then you're fully talking to them and you're actually talking about like elixirs and stuff this is really awesome that's kind of in depth actually i wonder if there's something about being in a place like when you're making these elixirs where the residual energy like necromantic energy of zaitan would be strong and you use that to like infuse your potions or i think that could be really cool especially with all the idea of like the jade in this region having those properties of being able to sort of like suck up magic and and hold it or uh you know harvest from it for later i think that's a great idea i think that's what that third question is isn't it like that sounds like that's what that that's kind of alluring to i get alluding to alluring to alluding to <laughs> alluring, <laughs> alluring. Um, and we got the elite spec armor so now necros can have a helm a shoulder and some gloves yeah it's mm. jady isn't it is it i don't even know could just be art i mean maybe it is could be just trying to see if typically they the elite spec the elite spec npcs usually wear the the armor piece for yeah uh, elite spec and oh those, those gloves look very out of place for the rest of the set. So that's why I'm like, it's probably the armor. Yeah, they do look a bit randomly out. So I, I mean, the rest of it is new, I think, though. I don't think I've seen the rest of the armor. Maybe the... I'm not sure about the face paint. I think the face paint is character creation stuff. I'm just trying to see if they click on other options. There you go. The Elixir version. They said um, option. I'm a harbinger more, more, uh, to be more exact and... Those beauties. These elixirs pump with magic. Those bullets are too. Okay. And you can learn all about the things. You can learn about harbingers, the magic, and the pistol. Oh, so you learn about every single facet of the actual class itself. The spec. Yeah, that's so yeah. good. Maybe they that maybe it's really like cool. dev explanations. <laughs> Man, it'd be cool. To imagine that, like you know, a video just pops up of someone, one of the devs, and says, "Well, actually, we decided to uh, go with this because of <laughs> oh my <blah>, gosh." <laughs> I don't know why they'd have a really deep, posh English accent, but it could be a thing. <laughs> anyway, so that's cool. That's cool. It'd just be interesting to see. I'm wondering where the other NPCs would be if they would all just be in this map, or they'd be spread around the entire world. Um, or the new world, sorry. Not the game, the, you know, Ender Dragons. That would be weird if they were in the new game completely. Oh, dear. But yeah, there's the, and then they had this kind of old Kainang, and then you kind of go towards new, the newer area, and then you've got this yeah. massive vault door. That looks cool, right? Yeah. And the labs and stuff, that it looks really awesome. Like, and it looks so different from map to map. Like, I think they showed us, like, so many, like, mini maps. So I don't know how, like, it will be spread, but it just looks awesome. Like, and it's just like, you can see, like, Indigo was talking about, like, the pretty much progression. And you can actually see that in, in the details of, like, everything. It just looks sick. Yeah, this bit's cool when you're looking at the kind of the window, the side part of this lab, they called it. There was, I can't remember what mm. lab it was, but... The Napui lab. Uh -huh. There's such a great transition in that one shot because like in the ruins, you have those sort of like stony blocks and then the bamboo that's kind of grown up mm -hmm. off of it. And it has yeah. a bit more of that, you know, like reclaimed by the wilderness sort of vibe. And then as you like walk through this hyper technological area and you look out, you can actually like see how the, the landscape itself is sort of shifting. And there's, you know, these remi like remainders of these, I don't know, kind of shanty buildings and yeah. then all of the different stuff there that feels a little bit more like ancient or primitive and you're surrounded by this incredible like technology that is literally just like emerging out of it what's this as well yeah that does it does look very cool there's this bit there's this thing 
There's a jade battery there, right? And it's got a little icon above it before they go into the vault door. There's, there's lots of stuff which has got these icons above them. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, what is that? What does that mean? Is that something we're interacting with maybe with our bot in the future? Just a, just a I, random vault. They, they mentioned this uh, in the live stream. I think it's part of the meta event where you need to recharge the batteries to protect it. Like, I don't know. I think Indigar said something about that. I think those like, those batteries probably you have to recharge them, but the the interactable like globe thing I've seen on on other maps like the Jade Sea. So that one in particular will probably be connected to the Jade bots, and it seemed like an it said like an offensive system. So maybe it's like a combat helper or some something you summon to assist you in combat. Okay. I like that. I yeah, mean same. It seems as though the Jade bot, and we'll get to this when we talk about the trailer later, but it seems as though it's going to have applications like worldwide and then other things that are pretty specific to Cantha. So I think having that mix, that's good. That's better than like it just being entirely specific to Cantha or anything like that. And it'll be interesting to see just how helpful those things within Cantha actually are. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. It just looks... <clears throat> just... it. It's not even the thing I find which is quite cool with this is that they could have just gone like hardcore kind of Asura tech way of things and yeah. just made it green. <laughs> do you know what I mean? That, that's something they could have done. I mean, True. that's something, you know, other games do. But look at this. Look at this kind of. Yeah. Let me just go back and pause it. Um, it. Indigo said something about the 70s, right? I think Rook, you took on, um, you were like enjoying that comment as well i'm not sure but i'm not sure if they meant the tech or the kind of look but the feel and i was look at this this one shot you'll take a second for it to come from the stream but um it's awesome like that whole board that whole just that screen and just the green and but like it's a very unique it, style i think i don't know it, it just looks cool it's very different yeah it's not recycled at all no it just looks so different like it looks like a different game and everything looks so different and it's just like it's gonna be epic mm -hmm. the like the way that they've reinforced these themes of this merging of the sort of historical cultural elements of cantha and then this evolution of the future and technology and advancements I love that, like, down to the smallest detail, they have continued to just reinforce this. I mean, when you're looking at this interface, you can see these sort of, like, more traditional artistic motifs, like, on the top and bottom and down the sides of the pillars. And, like, I'm sure you could probably say, like, oh, it's something about making the flow of the jade magic go through or whatever you wanted to justify it with, right? But the yeah. fact that they have all of that and then they have this much more what we would consider to be sort of modern futuristic, but kind of like you said, I, I actually missed that she said 70s specific, but I can kind of see that from like, you know, this, yeah. the patterns and designs. And um, so that, that merging of those two sort of artistic looks, I think is so well done. And it just, it reinforces all of the other stuff that you see in the zone. It must have been um, something else then. Because I was at the time, I was like, there was, I, maybe she says some, she, I'm pretty sure she said 70s. I thought someone else picked up. <laughs> Fine. It's because I'm near that, that year, those years, you see. I was very close. <laughs> 81, you see. That's why. That's why. It does, yes. In, in the rest of the, the rest of the lab as well, you know, there's, I, I did think, you know, I, I, there was part of me where I was like, EOD, there's a lot of green. There is a lot. And I was wondering, is, there, is that going to yeah. get annoying after a while? Like, is it just like, we know green is the theme of this expansion. Um, I think there's going to be some blue in different places as well, obviously. When, when we say different colors, we mean just like the general feel of the zones, not like everything is just green. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, you know, Jade is the, you know, the... It's going to be a very cool toned expansion. Lot, lots yeah. of blues and greens and light, d darker blues. I think Echo Vald will probably be. I'm really excited to see more of Echo Vald Wilds. And even in the game yeah. feature trailer, we saw like darker areas, more gothic. And it, but it does seem like as a whole, it is fairly vibrant in New Kaining City. So That's if true. you would use like shaders or if you use reshade, 
might want to tone him down just a little bit but uh if you yeah. like that vibrant aspect because i do love color and i love being able to like see a vibrant colorful world so i'm not too upset at it however even i have a line where you know i'm like is it maybe a little bit too much we'll have to actually see and play and you know get a feel for how much of it but i think overall i'm pretty fine with it mm. i personally love it i think i mean i yeah, think it's gorgeous same. right like we have a lot of green but like we talked about even in the you know as we were looking around right um they have broken that landscape up and specifically if there's a lot of backdrop that's green we have these other elements that are different colors yeah. that are coming in to like interrupt those sight lines things like that sort of purple pink whale all of the red accents and those colors as well they are colors that you know you see in a lot of different uh cultures but like particularly have significance in chinese culture um color symbolism and things like that is a, a big thing so to me it makes sense that like if those are the colors that you want and this is part of the narrative that you're telling that again we use them in such a way that they are something that's really memorable to us from the landscape um, and it would make sense too that just with this being a huge massive resource for them and it's natural innate properties being varying shades of green although jade does have some variants of coloration um like, yeah, why not? That would be something that you're using everywhere and that probably that color in and of itself comes to symbolize a lot of things to you, which we already know it did in Canton culture. So I don't mind it. And I think a lot. Yeah, I can't. I mean, I can't say everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I think that some <laughs> of the people who are like saying the entire expansion is garbage because they don't like the hue of green. I'm like, you were just looking for something to be mad about. <laughs> Like, yeah. This is, oh, yeah this is this is not the thing yeah. that was a like, while ago at I that point change now. download a shader and adjust the color balance on it on your own end <laughs> maybe that at that point you also reevaluate a lot of your life i don't know that uh, is true <laughs> Yeah. But I have a problem solver jeb bro i solved the problems that was one that was one way of doing it that's <laughs> true um yeah the scale of the actual lab as well is pretty is pretty immense because you've actually got mechs working in there as well so like things are quite exaggerated like screens are exaggerated control consoles are exaggerated size wise the whole place is just ginormous we're interested to know what these bars are <laughs> this information on some of the things it just says a line with a circle in it and it's like okay what does that mean there's no key no legend yeah no there's, X no, or y there's access, no way that we're gonna nothing. find out there's, that's true grief that's very true it uh, almost looks like I don't know if you've seen those like old. Uh, I think it's a Chinese calculator where like you have those oh, little yeah. bowls and like, abacus. You, yeah, so I didn't know the name in English. So yeah, it's just like they they look really cool, and it maybe it's to quantify something. I don't know. It just looks sick. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good pick. I was just sure. Love that. I also one. like that they evoke the sense of water in so many ways like when we were in that last shot where you had the green tubes and that sort of like glass case and all the blues that were in there it feels like you're almost looking at an aquarium even though you're not yeah, and then as we get right. into the city it's right there see like even looking yeah, out yeah. over there it almost feels like we are underwater even though we know we're on the surface and as we get into the city those holograms of the different aquatic creatures i mean i think it all goes to show you that water and or I mean, we can assume something to do with bubbles, right? That sense that this is going to be our water dragon, water expansion, and that water plays a large role surrounding this sort of island, uh, I think is all really lovely to see. Good point again. I know why <laughs> I add you lot on this stream sometimes on podcasts. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. The vault, anyway, you go out of the lab. So the lab leads into the actual city itself specifically. So the city, even though it is most of the map, isn't the whole map. Or maybe this is just the lead up to, right? Uh, and then this feels like it's going to be in most most of the map. But like this big vault door is pretty epic. Like they seem to be really... There is this... So in, in the actual launch trailer as well, they talk about how they don't trust anyone else like campers don't really trust aren't really trusting of people outside and rest interior and that vault door is very symbolic of that that is a very yeah. symbolic stay out we stay in kind of you know it's it's not just this small gate you know where, with people peering over the top it's a vault door inside of flipping what feels like a mountain do you know what i mean it's like it, it's mm -hmm. they're really 
close themselves off from the rest of the rest of the world and i always find it interesting how you know they tell the story of these stories of you know cutting themselves off and all this kind of thing and then it's just this blatant symbol of this exact thing it's just cool and you know it kind of it relays that it just emphasizes that point even more so um, I also love yeah. that it's that's such a good point, Jeb. I, I I totally agree, and I love that it's positioned in such a place. And like even with the lead in they gave us today on the stream, where they were talking about, um, you know, the ruins of old Kainang that are out there, and how apparently you know they've been trying to contain and deal with even the threat that's there. So you get this sense that I don't know. They almost feel as you transition from that zone into this one that what constitutes a threat has maybe expanded even from just what's directly next to them with like the undead to the whole world and yeah. this idea of like vaulting yourself off um to rebuild and and flourish and have your own era of peace i don't we don't know exactly right but yeah um i think is really well depicted no, and there's so many defenses, like the batteries uh that massive yeah. laser that was kept by that like the 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 weird jade golem that we saw that <laughs> yes. day like you know like even the sewers they look super fortified so and they mentioned the meta so there has to be something to do with like something's attacking and you need to charge up the defenses and protect everything so it's going to be super interesting especially like having a meta because i felt like in path of fire we didn't really have like a meta like heart of thorns so it would be really amazing that's if it's true. something that's just like you have to organize and like do it together like tangle depth and stuff so yeah, it's 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 gonna be fascinating to see were you gonna say How something we... for, for, yeah okay sorry oh <laughs> i was just about to say something uh how do we feel about the uh imbalanced day slash night cycle do you have a preference did yeah. they say yeah. specifically about it being night longer yeah, day yeah, shorter yeah. Uh -huh. oh night will be i missed longer. That. Oh. yeah they were saying it was it was to show off the the lighting basically and how good it looks at night which was do we have preferences <laughs> i don't care for lighting. It. <laughs> you don't have the night? say more say more say well, more well well, the thing is, is that I understand why they're doing it, right? Because this city features so much light, it, like specific light, right? These neon effects and things like that. Yeah. Yes, I do think that if we're looking at it just from like artist, like an artistic standpoint, right? Why do you think so much cyberpunk is set in dark nighttime oh. rain? You know, like the rain that's drizzling everywhere so that you see the reflections of the oh, neon. Oh, like, it gives me goosebumps. It's it is something that is about the atmosphere so it very much could yeah. be that they pointedly want it to be night not only to show off the light features but also because there needs to be a sense of this kind of i don't know darkness that's settling over cantha mm. or this um I, we don't know i don't want to say oppression because we don't really know what's happening at this point you know but that they could want something more like that it, it didn't feel wildly oppressive when we were in it i think it was just very lovely and beautiful and the colors pop and everything looks really gorgeous and it's a little bit yeah. shrouded in mystery but I, after seeing the daytime cycle, I actually loved it in the day. Yeah, I too. loved the like the distant tiers of buildings. I loved the kind of fog that we even see here. Like I loved it in the daytime. And weirdly enough, in games where there are night cycles, I find that I tend to find that even if they are the exact same amount of hours, I experience the nighttime as being it feels like it's three times longer as it is yes. because there is something about the darkness that after a while starts to wear on me. It's hard to explain. It's like, it it doesn't put me in a funk, but like I get tired of it being SAD. night. And it starts to feel. Yeah, yeah like, so it's one of those things where I almost feel like they could have done the reverse and it probably would have felt as though they were both the same amount of duration. Um, but we'll see when we get in there. I might really enjoy it. I don't know. So, as someone who's never played Guild Wars, um, does it does that cycle is still like when you you're playing in Kanta? Do you have that uh, weird like cycle where the night is longer than the day, or is I, there? No, I don't believe so. I played Fractions recently, and it just felt like normal. I don't normal. even know. Did they have a day and night cycle in Guild Wars One? Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't remember it ever being night in Kainang when I logged in. <laughs> But um, I, I also will say that Guild Rooster doesn't really do a lot of dynamic weather with their maps. 
But I think dynamic weather would have been really interesting to see in New Kainang because I remember factions and, and that Kainang city in the fog being so gray and dense. And that I think would have cast like a really eerie setting with the lighting. So I think that if they were to have like cycles of rain and heavy fog and like thick mist, I think that actually would have also expanded the experience of New Cunning City, but it just seems to be like a normal day-night cycle with night being a bit longer. This is like, the whole theme of this city is giving me so many good ideas for an outfit for my characters. Like, I'm just like, True. I want to be, I want to dress myself up as Harrison Ford and just wear a really <laughs> long, like, trench coat and just, I don't know, go around making sure people are, you know, not replicants. I just, do you, you know what I mean? I'm like, if you've not seen Blade Runner, like, you need to go see that movie right now. <laughs> Mate, go I'll be back later. Podcast. Bye. <laughs> I do if you've not seen Blade <laughs> Runner, if you've I not haven't seen Blade seen Runner, Blade Runner. Right, Kruf, go and see Blade Should Runner. Should I watch it tonight? And then, yes, and then go, <laughs> okay. it is one of the best movies <laughs> ever made. Like, Kruf, do you want to watch it together? Yes. Oh my Can God. I come join in another party? Because I like, Yes. Should we have a watch party tonight? No, no, no. But I'm not. I'm not going to insult it because like it's an, it's an older movie, but it is a fantastic movie. And if you've seen the artwork and you've seen the feel of it, and then you look at shots like this, there is a very, very strong feeling about it being very. It's that. It's that. It's that cyberpunk feel, right? It is. Like we've all yeah. talked about it, and that's but where one... like Blade Runner is kind of going for, I guess. One thing I actually really like about this, though, is that. The cyberpunk inspiration is real, right? And there are incredibly like well done titles within the genre of cyberpunk. Um, and there are things mm -hmm. that it evokes that are really cool. But one of the things that I love getting to see this city and even just looking at the shot is that it doesn't feel like a Western city with like fun little bits of generic East Asian stuff in it that yeah. like yeah. here or there, or like, you know, it's like a Western metropolis. And then on a flickering neon sign, there's like a woman in a tousled kimono who <laughs> like, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, I actually really appreciate that this feels as though it is Jade Punk. I've heard a lot of people calling it, which I personally just adore as they a term for it. They said it as well during the stream. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. I really like that it feels as though it is the architecture and inspiration from the actual cultures that they're drawing from. And then what that kind of cyberpunk influence would look like if it were entirely what all of this was built off of. You know what I mean? As if it were something that originated from that and became something like Jade Punk and all the like glowing windows with that sort of, um, yeah. you know, like the the pattern, there's a specific word for it that I, I, I'm spacing on right now. All of the like, just everything in it, I love. And these like telephone wire-esque oh, like things wind? that are the jade oh, highways. Man. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there's a specific word for those types of like paper door. I'm trying to, hold on, give me a second. Or like paper I just realized. coverings. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't though. <laughs> Very nice. Um, shoji, shoji. So if you have like sliding outer petition doors and windows, but I mean, obviously that kind of look is something that you see elsewhere too. But yeah, I, I think it's all really beautifully done. And the city is just like maybe one of my favorite places I've seen in this entire game. <laughs> mm -hmm. no, just, but that's what I was saying. We, You should have like, honestly, if you're a streamer or like a content creator, have a freaking like screenshot contest the first week of like this coming out because it just looks magnificent. And like like that we get to discover places we didn't know about. So like, it would just be amazing. Yeah. It's good. I do, I do like every, every Vista when I took, when I played the core game from the beginning, I took a screenshot. I wish I had my old PC, which is so old, which I don't know where the hell that hard drive is. <laughs> But like, never saved them. So I still, I still do it. But then, you know, the game continues to get older and older PCs, you know, they're stuck somewhere, somewhere. I don't even know. I've got to save them to cloud. But yeah, that's a good idea. This was, so this part of the stream, we saw a newer feature, which is the, they're kind of like ski lifts. Zip line. <laughs> Zip line things. I don't know. But they're cool, and I, made, I remember I made a, a comment about, you know, gliders are kind of going to maybe defeat that for some people, but then, like, you know, we, we found out you can use gliders, obviously, because one, we saw it, and obviously you can, but then there's people who can't use them. But also, it's just a way of, like, you know, immersing you in the sea, right? Someone said that as well. What do we think about these... What are they called? Are they called? What are they called? They're called ziplines. 
They just called them zip lines. Yeah, the in-game text says zip line. Yeah. I'd be great. Great. <laughs> <laughs> like coming up, it's going to be much easier than like mounting up. Like I, I feel, yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, it just looks cool. And like, then it's oh, yeah. all about your immersion. Or if you want to role play and say, I'm going down, and, <laughs> you know, yeah. oh, no, like, we were... <laughs> your mech came, the little, the little bot came out. I, yeah. I, I oh, yeah. Some... It's a part of the mastery, probably. That's my guess, too. Because from the trailer that we saw as well, it looks like they're there with you interfacing with it. Yeah. I mean, I love this because we talked about the fact that gliders could be a thing. And it does look like you can use gliders in the city because one popped on during the stream, right? Mm -hmm. But the idea that like these allow you to go up and down, you know, you can slide down them, come back up them. That um, like, you know, you were pointing out, uh, Rava, that there's like even some that are more kind of like a horizontal progression across so that it's not yeah. like you're having to, I don't know, clutter things with your mounts or like try to, you know, perch on a ledge to get high enough to go up to. It's just like part of how you can navigate the city and adds that cool element. People yeah. probably Plus want to jump off if they're going from like high to low, but as an elevator system, it could be really useful because sometimes springers, you have to like find the right area to do it you have to like hold it you might not have enough energy so this zip line could actually be pretty nice to get to higher areas yeah. like i'm wondering like echo Vod wilds how tall are the trees going to be maybe we'll see more use out yeah of and uh if i can put my mathematician glasses on uh technically at the pythagoras theorem you go faster uh by the diagonal instead of up and down i'm, I'm not doing a great job i am riveted um, i am so bad at math you sound like a genius right now <laughs> thank you uh, pythagoras theorem triangles square. yeah go i'm i'm with you i understand this so stuff. you know like I'm, you know I'm the going... vector yeah, you're going yeah. in an x and y direction mm -hmm. at the same time instead of just x and then y so technically yes. you're going faster you are going faster because the distance is less that's right x <laughs> i just want to take good. a second because i have realized that people have trademark moves like Kroof, you dab all the time oh, um I and Rama, i think you're t yes you do this and it's the cutest and i love it and now i'm like what's my trademark do i even have one i need to come up with something that's my physical move go to oh, Can you i have it for you one? i have it for you your face Armpit lights up face. when you're passionate like it's just it lights no. up no that's no the, one that's else the camera that's the camera oh <laughs> that's no, the camera I like issue it. from earlier all right sorry no, no wow. i feel like okay, whenever you go on a rent you look great like you're like oh and you <laughs> take us in whenever rook starts one of those never-ending rants it's just i love them i, I think yours them. is like you do like the thumb thing you're like Ooh, I, you do something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You do that. You do that pretty frequently. Uh, oh, now I'm Jeffro, you got to work on something. Yeah. I'm yeah. just, I'm just the general me. <laughs> is iconic. So, so, so. I'm just gonna try and work on my rock eyebrow lift. Yeah. <laughs> you got this. You got this. Thank you. Um, there is a. <laughs> this podcast is ridiculous. Um, so when the J, when you go onto the zip line, which I think they could have, there could be a better name for that, but I think, you know, we know what we all know what zip line is, I guess. There's a, this little counter which comes up. I'm pointing at my screen. And it's this, <laughs> there's no point in doing that. Um, it's like a yellow, like a green triangle. And it says two now and actually gets, goes up this counter. So I'm wondering if it's like a speed on there or something or like a, I don't know, but there's a counter there. And I think that's that's related to the mastery somehow. I don't know what it means. Maybe speed. I don't know. Could be. Maybe, Maybe there's one switch faster. Going yeah. Because I yeah. imagine like horizontal things, like even for boss fights or just events, like you get a faster elevator or like zip line to then shoot off to the next platform or something. So it oh. could maybe depend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be. Could be. Then the whale. Sorry, I just saw the whale. I was just <laughs> It's so awesome. It looks so cool. It really does. It'd be interesting to see what kind of a kind of... I don't know. I, I, it makes me think about people that have died in the past as well in the in the game, the original game, if they'd have, like... Oh. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I really like the way you phrase that. You're like, and here we are in the city in the lift, and what does this meter do? It makes me think about people that are dead. <laughs> no, that's not what I see. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> It would make me think about like, you know, because, you know, all of this, they're recreating things, right? Like a feeling. And I was just thinking like, 
there are in some movies and cyberpunk movies and stuff they have holographic statues of old you know heroes and stuff you know and there's like in halo that's something they have as well not often but there's just one i remember and they just have you know the they have them doing different poses and stuff and they they move in the anime and i'm just thinking is there like going to be any you know, like holographic old poses like of people like from the past i'm just that's it's just a, a random idea that's all I don't know it why could I be that. you know how there is a when you do the jade fractal there is a whale that's encased in jade so maybe oh. it's the dead whale <laughs> <laughs> there's hey, something hey, all see. about it <laughs> You rather come in with that lore. Hey, sometimes, you know, it's fractals and raids I can help, otherwise I'm out. Like, Rob is <laughs> trying to save me. I appreciate it. Uh. No worries. But it would be interesting to know if like, because they, once again, mentioning the Mesa and it looks like this fortified city where they have a lot of defenses. Does the whale do anything? Does it get upset if like the city is attacked or does it still float oh. around and watch everybody die? Like, Does the whale have feelings? How sensitive that, is the whale to conflict? <laughs> no, I don't know. Really I love it. In term, no, they could do so many things with this story or also just meta events to then visualize in the open world that something's happening. Like, if something is taken over and malfunctions, instead of the whale, it turns into, like, a giant, like, red dragon or a phoenix, and everything goes, like, from green to red, and it's like, okay, the map is telling you panic mode, this is the meta. So, like, there's actually a lot of potential with, like, environmental storytelling with this. Yeah, because it seems like everything has some kind of, like, defense, like you know, component to it, maybe. So maybe yeah. everything, like, you know, those fish that are, like, calm and floating around on those walls, like, maybe, like, they just go berserk or so. I don't know. Like, it would it, be really cool. It would be weird if there's just, like, a giant serene whale floating as, like, the city's getting bombarded by jade bullets and everyone's just, like, and the whale's just, like, <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so I mean, even the if... impression of a whale again, crew for me? Yes, that please. would be very good to hear. <laughs> That does not sound that, the same, I do not think. That doesn't sound that's as, what I did. as good as the that's imprint. Exactly. No, Is that not what you did? What that's, you did. Exactly, that's exactly what I did. No, I trust Kurt <laughs> implicitly, so I believe Kurt in this. That's yeah. So is that your iconic <laughs> thing now? Uh, <laughs> it's a goat. Oh, boy. That's the, that's the classic no, goat. No, a goat is fish. <laughs> That's a sheep. No, that's a spider. Kruf knows her animal. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean I think Kroof knows their animals? That's a spider. I mean, this isn't like a, tra <laughs> like a trademark thing for Kroof. Like, hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. I know lots about animals. This is nothing that Kroof knows a lot about. <laughs> Cats sound like ah. Whales sound like ah. I mean, it's sound like meh. Cats, cats definitely sound like eh if Connor's involved. <laughs> you needed to end oh, with like mid. No. The joke was there. The joke was oh, there. No. All right. I mean, I think maybe we would see something. We did see in the trailer that oh, the power seemed to be flickering. So the lights in the windows, right, seemed to flicker in various interfaces. Mm. So I do wonder if at some point in the meta, things like the whale might flicker in and out, or there might be something like that. Of course, they have to be careful because if strobe effects get too bad, there are worries about seizures and stuff like that. Yeah. But I am wondering if maybe that's how they're going to choose to reflect, like you were saying, the atmosphere of the moment, as opposed to these elements just, you know, chilling and the whales just watch it as people scream and die. <laughs> and it just goes, ah! Yeah. <laughs> it goes yeah, they need to have your actual voice in yeah, the game. Yeah, rip this. that. And as the meta event is going, the whale just change, changes from ooh to ah. <laughs> That's how you know the meta event is going on. Imagine you're like peacefully exploring Kang, and all of a sudden you get ah. <laughs> oh gosh. Change that RGB, which is probably what they're doing. Great environment. Great environment. Lovely mm -hmm. tiles. Lovely lights. <laughs> so good. And you can pet the animals. There's a dog that you can pet. And a kill that. And oh, a cat. Shit. That, right. <laughs> that poor cat. Poor okay. cat. Pardon me. There's loads of jade tech around everywhere. There's these kind of big massive lamps on the wall as well, which look like they're just jade. They're just jade. They're actually yeah. just all like just kind of infused with jade glass i don't know what what the hell they are but they've been they really had to cut some costs <laughs> it's yeah. not actually jade they just got a slight film around it it just yeah, looks maybe. so good 
like Rook was saying, it's just like they they just mix like kind of I don't know, this is like this Asian culture, but not really. Like it's just Gil was twoified and it just looks really good. Yeah, that makes looks sense. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I, I love the city, all the details. And as we were going through and they started talking about ways to make exploring this city uh, even more rewarding, right? They were saying that, and I can't wait to see this, and I know many people that are going to put it to the test, but saying that basically everything that you can see has been mapped so that you can actually get on it, mm. go around it, climb up on it. And then hearing as well, you know, a few minutes later that they've integrated these Breath of the Wild inspired discovery things, like these yeah. discovery components where if you manage to get to that really hard to reach place, there may be some kind of interactive mini puzzle to help you kind of like engage with the environment and then get a reward. That's so amazing. You get indigo at the end. Yes. <laughs> the only the only worthy reward. Yeah, exactly. Just get I mean, we have a Hopefully high. You can steal her corgi. <laughs> exactly, high bar is set. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want two blues and a green. I need no, indigo. One. Indigo. <laughs> Fair enough. The, uh, the I like that turret skin actually. I kind of wanted that for my engineer. It looks much better than the one I currently. Ooh, they update the turret models. That would be cool. That would be nice. That would be nice. I mean, it would be good if they updated a lot of the models in the game. I think I think well, we're getting to a point now where like they could just do a little bit of a cheeky, you know. Expansion four. Let's go back to Tyrion. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that can be the work that I do. Um, okay, so continuing on, have a look at Karnak. I think we got the general gist. We like it. Uh, what else would they show us? Let's have a look. I mean, I think we have to talk about the cobble ward with the Tengu. You want to go over to the no, whole haircut guy? There's the whale, though. I mean, there's a lot oh. of things. Oh, 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 I thought we were doing <laughs> the whale. The whale had been whales. The whale has been. It whale. looked like even it has symbols on it as well. Oh, yeah, it has yeah, like I a pattern that. in it. Yeah. I'm trying to see if I can find the Tengu. I think the Tengu is like. This is the Tengu ward, right? Where I am now, I think. Where you can get your raptor, yeah, yeah. Ward? Oh, the fish! There's the fish! The orange and, and purple fish. fish. There's fish, the holographic fish wandering around as well. And then you fish so them good. out. <laughs> you have a yeah, those are some of the rare rod. fish. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> just like you try to just yeah. catch them. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. First one. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever can the actually catch those fish wins the prize. The idea of a Tengu ward is really great. I mean, there there's so much history with the Tengu, and I'm glad they're leaning into it. Um, one, apparently, as we found out, this city being built on what was once Tengu land. So the idea that they've maybe been relegated to this small area, I think, again, adds to the layers of this whole history and landscape and, and cultural context. Um, but two, the fact that on top of that, there was a huge push to purge all non-humans from Cantha. So another kind of thing here where... Um, I'm really curious about how they'll bring to life that history in this area. You know, um, are they forced to live in this ward? Is it just that they gravitate towards one another because this has become kind of a bastion of culture for them? Um, you know, are Tengu still, it doesn't seem like, right? They are like actively uh, trying to get Tengu out of Kantha. Um, I get the sense maybe that they have become accepted, although, you know, a smaller presence because of many of the things that were done and the Tengu wars and all kinds of things that have happened in the history of Tengu in this region. So I, I'm just really curious to see how they bring this into the story. I am too. Someone who's never played Guild Wars, like, so you know how, like, they mentioned later in the game, like, that this little girl has never seen a char? How does it work there? Like, that there are Tengus both in Kanta and in Corteria, but there's no chars, like, in Kanta. Like, I don't there's know a, the, the lore in there. There's a specific reason for that. Um, Tengu have been found around. From my understanding, and Kruf, if you have any more information, please, you can jump in. But uh, from my understanding, the main group of Tengu that we know of in mainland are the ones that live in Dominion of Four Winds. Um, and they actually came over because of the Great Flood with Zaitan. So what, what were they calling it in the stream? The Zaitan Calamity? The, the Zaitan Calamity or Disaster. Disaster? Or event, or disaster, Zaitan I think. Event or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is the first time I've heard them refer to it specifically as that, right? But when that happened, there was a group of Tengu 
who like sensing the rising antagonism already that had sort of fostered between humans and Tengu because of a massacre that happened. There's a lot of lore that went into this. <laughs> like, um, okay. they decided to, that it was like their time to travel across the seas um, and try and like seize this window to go across the waters to mainland um, because they figured that at some point with this resurgence of Zaitan, the waters would become untraversable, basically. So then they went to the mainland and made this settlement there. That's my understanding mm -hmm. of how they are there. Uh, yeah, I think the Tengu fled from Kantha to the Dominion of Winds, but then there's also some Tengu in the Munguma jungle, and then also, as we saw in Ice Brood, some Tengu migrated more north. So they kind of just uh, went around, but no one really has ever come from Central Tyria to okay, Kantha. Yeah. So like Char okay. haven't been over, and Asura haven't been over. Mm -hmm. And now they will. And now they will. So there will be some nice. inter well, hopefully there'll be some interaction interaction in that way. I mean Anka and the Aether Blades, <laughs> you know? Mm. This and is your Tengus boy, have nice. bub cuts. Yeah. This is exactly what so if you're listening <laughs> okay. and you can't see, there is a bowl haircut Tengu. Um, we have to give props to the prop artists and the character <laughs> artists. <laughs> Bowl for boy. creating this this tengu with a bowl cut and they just got it like last month which is very interesting that they're still doing work on multiple variations of tengu models but that's neither here nor there uh but i do really <laughs> enjoy this area for the sake that here in new cunning city which you get your raptors and your springers in new cunning city which i wouldn't have guessed i would have imagined you might have would you know acquire them in xingjai because raptors and springers in a city area that seems a little cramped to have like mounts and animals like around in pens, but uh, I guess it makes sense because then you'll have the taxi stuff in Xingjie Island experience a bit of Cantha without actually having a raptor. And then, isn't it? Because I assume, this is quite early. I assume this would probably be like the second map that we kind of get to. It might be the first map. No, I think this will be the second because I can't imagine. Why would we go to Xingjie Island? Second well, or third Xinjie, or fourth. Is Xingjie going to be like a... Is Xingjie quite big, though? You think? I think well, it's, it's a decent a... size. I think. Is it? <laughs> I think it's a... Is it? It's a fine... It has a fine surface area. <laughs> I mean, Shinkai is supposed to be, Excellent. I mean, it's supposed to be a large center for agriculture, right? There's a lot of, um, outside of the yeah. monastery, there's a lot of farmland. So I would assume there would have to be some amount of space for that. <laughs> yeah. I don't it's, know if it's, I mean, it's I, I'm just planting the, planting the seeds of conversation. Yeah, I think I have a, my prediction is that we'll go to Xingjie probably first. Also, the sequence of the trailer that we saw for the gameplay, you know, showing the first map first. You know, I was like, probably Xingjie, then New Kainang, then probably Echo Val, then Jade Sea, similar to the layout of factions. In factions, we started Xingjie Island, went to Kainang, and then we just went down. So mm -hmm. why mess with that order if it worked? So you could only get your... um. Your raptor on the second map? Is that? If this is the second map, they said that this is where it, you'll be able to acquire those two mounts in, in this specific map. Welcome, everyone. But I wonder when we're going to get gliding, because they also confirmed that gliding is going to be available to End of Dragons players right off the bat. So it's like, do you train mm. to get gliding similar to how you do a heart to get your mounts? Or is gliding just like you get gliding by entering the zone <laughs> oh, boy. no one will be in heart of thorn yeah. anymore <laughs> that's a mastery right so i wonder if they just give you the basic mastery or like or probably because then because you have to earn xp and obviously the xp you earn has to be specific to that region so that you earn that level anyway so they would have to give it to you yeah because it couldn't be unless you can pick unless it's a mastery or it's, unless it's a sub mastery <gasps> no sorry <laughs> i don't know <laughs> anyway yes right. let's continue uh bowl cut tengu uh <laughs> as well as the arrest of the armor which is kind of hanging around there that's one of the i love i love this tengu and they said that it's actually based off a specific type of bird um mm. Oh, I don't remember what it was. It, it, they say it in the live stream, which I thought was hilarious. And now I actually wonder if there is a bird that has feathers like that, which I would not put it past birds because they are ridiculous. Um, but I love that. And I did see in chat, too, that there were some mentions that apparently there were a few native tribes even throughout mainland Tyria, um, like way back when. 
for Tengu. So that diversity of different types of birds in different regions, the fact that they've updated those models to show so many different kinds, it delights yeah. me so deeply. And I just so want good. Tengu to be playable more than ever now. <laughs> Looks like Harry from Dumb and Dumber, someone said. That's so much, that's Oof. actually very true. Uh, <laughs> that movie is amazing. Okay, let's keep going. Wait, supplier Cre he's called Crex. Crex? Crex is his name. Their name, sorry. No assumptions. They they're really like I just keep thinking, I guess, like there is some like very char kind of like the feet and stuff. Like and I was just thinking about armor. And how that would fit, I guess. I uh, know, I know. It's the it, but it's the hunch over here as well. So I guess it, then it becomes more norny as you go up. And <laughs> then the neck is kind of wide. There, I don't know. Char are upright sometimes. <laughs> they could do sometimes. that option in the in the future, like make them I more would stand up, upright, like they did with orcs in World of Warcraft when they. That's the out one reason I don't play a lot of char. Is because they're always slunched over. And I'm like, yeah. oh, you're giving me back pain. I oh. kind of like it. In, I mean, it's tough. I kind of like it in the sense of how um, bestial Char are. Like the fact that they leaned so much into it that I kind of feel like it gives them a unique silhouette in the way that like they might even carry a lot of power through their shoulders and that kind of set. Um, but yes, it can be kind of annoying. In any game, whenever they have some kind of slumped model or something like that, and you're just like, just stand up, just do it. Yeah. yeah, but like, if you come to, uh, if you're new to Guild Wars 2 and you see the char race, like without like any, like knowing, like, you know how, like, there's like connotation about being a char player and stuff. But if you're completely new and you see the chars, they look so sick. Like my first character was a char because I was like, whoa, they look so cool and the movement and stuff. And then the more I played, the more I found it like clunky for me because uh, I, I suck at jumping puzzles and stuff, but they are <laughs> really cool. Uh, if if you just arrive to get Oster and it, and that's the first thing you see, fam, I have <laughs> just looked up this bird. I literally oh. typed in "bird with a bowl cut" on Google, and it is yeah. a it is a Golster canary, a Golster yeah, canary. canary. And they said canary, yeah. I didn't. didn't and didn't Jeb, Jeb, hold on, I'm gonna copy paste you the. Picture. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, yes. Hey, what? It's so good. Oh my just, god. <laughs> What in oh, the? No. I'm having flashbacks oh, to when no. I was five. Oh wow! What I am obsessed with this bird. I have never Amazing. seen a more beautiful bird. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the most beautiful creature I've ever seen. Can I see love it. You them. Can barely see its eyes as well. Like oh. you can just see the beak poking. I wonder why they have that little haircut like that. Do you know what I mean? Like what when you're is flying, that about? Evolutionarily, if you're flying, there's a lot of wind and debris in your eyes. Okay. Yeah. Is that actually, yeah, but you have to see where you're going. No, they <laughs> echolocate. I don't. They just detect. You. Yeah. They echolocate. <laughs> Well, they're canaries, so they're pretty vocal. So I guess, yeah, maybe oh, they maybe, could echolocate. Okay. I don't think so. Oh, look at Rob knowing things about birds. <laughs> science! Sci <laughs> oh, science. Uh, it's my science baby. rules. It is your baby, and that's true. Inertia is a property of matter. Feel, feel, feel not a science guy. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. I love this bird, and I would die for them. And that's the most important thing that came from this live stream today. <laughs> Sounds like Not it. Not the panda soliloquy? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Aww. Okay, okay. That's the runner up. That's the runner up. It's very yes. high up there. Very high up. So they did this weird little jumping puzzle. Okay, right. Let me see what else there is. Because I want to talk about the trailer from Far End of Dragons. I think generally, here we go. Yeah, they showed the uh they should this was when they showed the difference between the day and night cycle, actually. Um Some people can't stand straight and there's nothing wrong with it. That's also very, very true. That is very true. Yes, 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 yes. I think this is more of a, this is more of a specifically everything, every single character in, in, in the race, like, and as, and as well, like, maybe they, they could be that, that thing, you know, there as well. I think, I think more so the reason Char are kind of 
hunched over is because a lot is because they are literal cats as well so when they run they put their paws on the ground so like movement yeah. and everything else and standing up and obviously there could be some thoughts there about you know what they're like in terms of you know the other races within the world and trying to be similar to them and you know all this kind of there's loads of stuff they can go into i don't think there was any insinuation there from anyone that you know there's anything wrong with standing up and having a hunch i don't think that's anything that anyone anyone was thinking about at all so mm-hmm. if anyone took offense to that sorry about that but that's that, i don't believe that anyone in this in this podcast would uh would be saying anything about that um okay so yeah the day i do like the day it's yeah. good it looks so good it's so good and i love how the colors pop differently at day or night yes. oh. yeah like it, those trees that were bright pink in the night and now they're like this really nice pastel that goes really well with the green it just looks awesome and it and like it breaks up the green more because there's blue in the sky and mm, white so yeah. it breaks it up more so it's like yeah yeah i don't know um and yeah no it looks it just it does look good and also i didn't notice i think when it's lighter as well you can notice shapes more i didn't notice the i keep pointing at my screen like you can see <laughs> like the, the <laughs> round yeah if you're, I, just, I, I can see my mouse i mean i could do that the roundness of the um some of the buildings there's like these less harsh kind of so you can see the difference between the the other yeah. the buildings do you know what i mean so there's the more kind of culturist cult, culturist <laughs> Not word uh, the, <laughs> the culture the older culture of like kainang and then the more modern way of things being yeah. more rounded does that make sense like it, it yeah. it's pretty it's pretty cool how that is even though they're still kind of on the same like i guess plane. structure yeah, they, yeah it's yeah. it's weird so i don't know it's it, you can see that kind of difference and i wonder if you can tell that difference as you go further out or further in depending it's just it well, could be interesting to walk through when you were uh, in old Kanang, I don't know if you know how they looked outside from that lab. You could see like all the bamboo structures that were destroyed. Yeah. So it's like they're taking like they're they're keeping like the old, but they're adding the new. And I think that's what you see in this like like and view, which is I'm really, really awesome. interested to see the other and to go like more on the coast of what Kantha was in Kainang mm-hmm. City, because Nepui Quarter is is it's fairly inland it's not right by the coast either so there must have been a really great wave to go that far inland to destroy areas of Nepu, uh, Nepui quarter so i'm really interested to see if we'll actually be able to explore vaster amounts of that you know sunken ruined old kainang area because it was only a really small section of the stream it's mm. true that's a good point Let's see where yeah. else we are here and I'm just so over the moon that they made this a whole zone again. Because yes. there are so few MMOs that actually take something like a city and make it into a region, right? And like, I believe that it was, oh gosh, the original, like Old many, Kainang. Actually. Yeah, I know. I like, Old Kainang, I believe, used to be approximately like one third of the overall landmass of that main island. So when you think about that, that is huge. Like that is an entire region of Cantha that literally was just this city. So to have a whole map zone that, you know, is treated just like any other map zone that is a city hub is, it's just so unique. And it makes a lot of sense as to why this would be the last map shown because it takes this probably took so long to do because it's not just like creating a map with an open plane with variations and level with rocks and trees and you know forest foresty areas this has to have so much detail with each and every corner so this must have taken them this was probably the map that took the most time to complete grant we haven't seen the rest of the maps or all that stuff but I, I mean, kudos to the amount of time and the dedication it takes to do a full city justice. And we only saw a snippet of this, so I hope that we can go deeper and deeper into like the royal areas and then maybe even the sewers. So it's a, it's a tall yeah. order. I'm just waiting in the stream moment to see when this, the, the iconic moment yeah. of the stream happens. <laughs> um, the new meme. <laughs> yeah. 
the new meme he's got connor's gone over to the cat stay away from the cat <laughs> and, connor, and gone to pet it first of all pets it actually actually look kind of looks like it kneels down to to kill oh, it oh my god <laughs> oh, to kill oh my god it's like rolling over and stuff and the kid's is... like oh. It's just this slow. was such an incredible moment. This is the kind of moment that makes live streaming just so hilarious and fantastic and dynamic. And oh my gosh, like it was as if they had actually scripted this with <laughs> all of them zooming in and getting up close and talking about petting the cat and getting right up to the cat. And then <laughs> the great betrayal, the great murder we all witnessed. <laughs> Colin is probably like, yes, the water meme is dead now. <laughs> 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 Replaced by the dead kitty. <laughs> I just oh. feel so bad. I feel so bad for Connor because there is like nothing. Well, okay, there are things that would be very bad that I would not want to be called on the internet. But there are very few things that I would want to be called on the internet that like <laughs> were like meme adjacent. And I would never want to be called the cat murderer. <laughs> Like the kitten, the kitten, kitten. the kitten killer, oh kitten killer. He oh has God. to be feeling so bad right now. You I really want see. them to do an Easter egg now, where there's one cat that you interact with that does die, and you get an achievement for it. Like, can someone just quickly rush that and write that, please? <laughs> it's so good. If you want to see something funny, go back to that moment and like replay it, but in slow mo. <laughs> like, it's terrible. You should see their faces. You, can, you should see their faces. Like each one of their faces is just devastated for like a second. Like Indigo is like fully like. Looks and like it took me a minute. <laughs> At first, I thought the cat just kind of like flopped over to be pet, and then I was like, "It's not moving." Oh, the kitten isn't moving. Oh, it despawn. Oh, it died. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, wow. You see all their faces, <laughs> and they're just, it's, you have to go and watch this. It's actually. Oh, go. Oh, all, yeah, I don't know. And the it was hilarious. Like, ah! <laughs> it was hilarious and terrible and the best. And the whole chat was just like oh, flooded with kitten god. killer comments. <laughs> so... Oh my god. <laughs> Ruby's oh. just like, what? <laughs> like, how dare you? Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, you're listening to the audio, but you couldn't see me playing that in slow motion. It was kind of disturbing. Um, basically, what happened was is that <laughs> Connor, one of the devs who was showing off the map, did a, like a slash kill command on the kitten in the game, and the kitten died. Uh, so that is that is the message there after well, that's cool. after gaining its trust and petting it he killed the kitten basically fired that's what happened <laughs> demoted brooke is just like harassing us in the chat now with pictures of this pictures of this bird because no is, uh, i just put one more it's very cute it's very cute it's like i don't i, don't, I would love to know the evolution the reason just... why they think they've got that little haircut it just looks like it has a little monk's tonsure. Yeah, like some yeah, of the yeah, pictures yeah. online, it has like a little bald spot, which is like the like oh. the part where all the feathers come out. So it's just this like like a part or like, but it's just this perfect little bald yeah. spot. Wow, they're I bald as well. Over. That's even better. I really love that dumb canary. Do you, feel, do you are you on the Tengu hype train now, Tang uh, Jebro? <laughs> there, there's a bald, there's a bald Tengu. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe there was just never there was never a chance to be to be bored someone just said end of cats oh god <laughs> is actually Oof. yeah the end of hashtag end of cats i guess i think we're pretty good with kainang and the the whole tour oh no there was a bit they were talking no no there was still a bit there's the skiff bit where they were they were touring around on the skiffs they showed off a part of the sea which was quite cool i think still coming up okay still coming up <laughs> there was an <laughs> ant on my webcam and i had to smack it fine shall i, I take am... you on a tour <laughs> Ooh, look at crew stream room you know, crew tour instead of canine tour yeah, you know sorry. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> there were Obi says in chat noodles there were a lot of nudes in this stream um <laughs> 
there are a lot of discussions about noodles and or noodle based foods, which I am now very hungry just thinking about it again. Yes, yeah, same. Wait, we're hungry and I we're watch talking his... about nudes? Yes. <laughs> well, no, I'm thirsty not... because we were talking about nudes, but I'm hungry because uh, of all the noodle references there that were. Was good job, Rook. Very good. <laughs> okay, I have to explain that I can't even take credit for this myself because there is a ramen place near us that if you order their ramen, which is delicious and is one of my favorites in the city, they send you a sticker every time that says send nudes. But N O O D S. <laughs> nice. So wait, does that mean Rook, that when EOD comes out, you're gonna have like a stack of noodles while gaming and discovering cancer? Okay. Yes. Are you kidding me? Yes. Yeah, yes. Like I, I, idea, I hope you'll stream it. <laughs> I'm gonna have a whole mukbang stream while I'm playing through Kining City, just like eating ramen. Let's and, do like, it. Seaweed wraps mics. and you rice. You should have two mics. You should have a mic like Ooh. here, and then a mic like in, in my throat. Mic. Yeah, just like in your like on the edge of your mouth. Like just no, there. no proof. Not? not in your throat. Proof. No. 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 Don't have the mic. In, I don't. I think that I'd be fine. <laughs> That's not, that's good. more extreme. I don't think that's mukbang. That's something else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Once again, no, that's I did not make those kinds of jokes. <laughs> isn't that called an endoscopy? I, I didn't actually say anything. I mean, isn't, that's mm -hmm. not a colonoscopy? What? No, I said an endoscopy. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, that is definitely oh. not it. <laughs> I probably prefer that. Oh, Jebro. Oh, Jebro. I had Oscopy. Um, Kainang City is wonderful. <laughs> like, yes, Kainang. Really and like the water and the skiffs. And it does feel very like Venice-like as well. Look at the columns. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at that column there. That looked cool. Yeah, the this JD weird tower comments. we mentioned, like, I wonder if you can go up and down a bit like in Minecraft, you know, when you do that water uh, elevator and you shoot up and down. It's oh, really cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yes. and they talked about some of this area housing the ministries and the various ministries that still exist, which are a part of the kind of government beneath the emperor that support <laughs> Kantha. All of this was so gorgeous. I just love it. This is just very nice. Yeah. It's good to look at. Being in skiffs also really fun. I liked the part of the meta events they showed as well. And they talked about how they wanted to kind of um, diversify all the different events in this zone so that they were sort of like little mini games, but there were a ton and it was all kind of chaotic. So you were trying to like juggle all these different things together, which I thought was great. But seeing that you get to use your skiff in some of those too. And like we mentioned when we were watching live, that you could even have like a party with you in the skiff and that they could help you do this faster, right? If they're cheering you on, the skiff's going quicker. So that there's a lot yeah. of different ways that they are integrating those things. So it's not just, you know, purely fishing for the skiff. There's other stuff you can do with it too. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be great. Oh. The 28th strangers. needs to come now. I know. It would be cool. Yeah, this place looks cool. <laughs> it looks like a nightclub. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. I guess, I guess what you mean. But me. It's very much the centerpiece of this area for sure. It looks like you could. That kind of water goes right up to it as well. I wish they kind of looked up a little bit more as well. They didn't look too high up, I guess, that the building's pretty damn high. But yeah, there was this event just outside of this um, this main area where there were skiffs gathering power. I can't remember what the event was these little bauble things there we go um and you, you i think someone was talking about how you know it's kind kind of cool that you could team up with your friends and you, in this event and they could help speed up the boat while someone else is piling it you know and there's there is that involvement where you know because this is technically you know a mount on water which is you know involves more than one player so it's a bit a tiny bit a bit like siege tale but in a very very different way where you know you're just empowering it to go quicker i guess but it's nice how they kind of want to make people people feel included in in every way like even yeah. with skiffs it's just like oh we want to make sure people feel included in some of what how the game is being played and it's just like there's always this thought of that inclusion in, the, in the, whatever they do it's, if, yeah you know, it's very hot it's nice you know it's nice i like it it's good um yeah, and they so did mention the jade brotherhood with all of this that apparently yes. the jade brotherhood is a large part and like one of the driving threats and factors in this meta event that's oh. true that's true yeah it's going to be interesting and to see how they kind of keep 
coming in and out of the, the city for sure. I'm not sure if you're going to say something, Rava. You said you were like... Uh, no, oh. I was just looking. I was just got... I got distracted by the skiff, to be honest. It's just like oh, green okay. stuff. Woo! <laughs> that, it looks really cool. <laughs> I, I just love the skiff mechanic where, like, you need your friends to cheer for you to drive. Like, you yes. know? It's so, like, you know, you take a car and life. your friends are like... Yeah. Go! You got this! So much yeah, for no, being it's... a responsible passenger. <laughs> You're gonna crash! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Good job! Yeah. You killed yeah. a cat! <laughs> oh! oh my god. <laughs> too much, too much! Too soon, too soon. Okay. Yeah, it's all cool. And then we got that little bit of a preview of... Uh, I I believe it's part of the meta event, right? That at a yeah. certain point it procs and then somebody actually, Yao, engineer, our beautiful friendly agender engineer, Yao, comes running up and uh, the door opens and then we face this big boy. He's, oh, well, this yeah. creature is so good. This entity mm -hmm. is so good. But did they say that it's protecting something? Like, is there protecting the core of the jade mech or something? Like... Because there's this massive laser on top. And Either it just protecting looks... or just kind of went a bit haywire. They mentioned that quite a bit, like a lot of the, the technology is going a little bit haywire and having some errors. So maybe it is a situation with an error. And that is not a good Man. mech to be going <laughs> a haywire. It's a little deadly. No. Look at no, Yao's I think they... arm as well. Like, sorry, I just, I just randomly They did Yao dirty. Like, Oh, I mean, oh with the character though. model? The concept art was so good, and the in-game model's kind of potato. I am like not you. super sold on their face. I know. I, looks... The rest of the model, I really like. The arm and stuff is yeah, cool. Yeah, everything, yeah. The face and the hair, though, it just, it's not what the concept art was at all. I was, oh. I was like, yay, yeah! And I was just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, but the yeah. the creature that's in there is uh yeah really cool i think i mentioned that it was supposed they had made some of these to be like defenders of important areas or i mean kind of like power yeah. generators i would guess or parts of the city that in case something ever made it in that deep so to have something like this yeah run amok for some reason whether something or somebody is behind it or it's just yeah. like the actual powers of jade are fluctuating and it's causing these strange things to happen I don't know, but this fight looks cool. Well, the name it does. The name it, the name of it is Corrupted Jade Bamoff. So corrupted. Yeah. Deal, uh, they mentioned that it went haywire, but usually it's there to protect. So once again you get back into that like they're really trying to fortify and protect themselves from whatever threat is happening. Mm, um but they're so like, protective. Over you see that. <gasps> oh, but they're so protective that their own technology has been turned against them. Oh, could be yeah there's so many people i mean that that's the thing though when you are protecting yourself so much those protections can be this is a very therapy counseling thing those <laughs> th this is here's a little bit little snippet of information not all protections are protective and actually a lot of protections that a lot of people have specifically and, and and well i guess sometimes i guess i'm talking larger in terms of this culture that's quite closed off i guess can be quite harmful because you shut yourself down from so many opportunities and so many things that can occur but and you open yourself up to other threats and, and that's something to think about it's just, you know bring some counsel and knowledge in there everyone that's good um using that hundred <laughs> hundred thousand dollar uh, student debt loan to my to full oh no we made it real again no. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. we were like yay <laughs> <laughs> and then we're like oh debt <laughs> that's life uh, <laughs> anyway it looks cool it looks real yeah. cool yeah, real cool. Real and we cool. got to see uh, again that snippet of what you mentioned earlier, Jeffrey, with the mm. uh, the flappy dragon thing, and it had a uh, the face. The <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the wyvern. Wait, what is it called? That mount that I hate. The sky no, I like flappy dragon thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the flappy dragon. Flappy there, there was dragon. that weird skill that we can't recognize with the face. Yeah, the second when... skill. Oh, yeah. wait, someone used it. No. Yeah, yeah, just before, like they were like, no, they didn't use it, but it was there again. So oh, it's, it's yeah, just, yeah, just, I'm, I'm just wondering what right, it is. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, let's Typically, see. that Goodness. icon is also used for dev commands for kill commands, uh, but I don't ah. think they would put that on a mount. I don't think they'd have any reason to do that. So I kind of predict that it's something with the Jade bots because Jade bots have interacted with everything mm. in the game for the most part, yeah. like lighting. Yeah. That I was like, yeah. what if Jade bots also interact with mounts? Because mm. you have a bunch of masteries that are associated with. Uh, the mounts already but what if people don't have the ice brood saga masteries or they don't have you know season four masteries so we'll probably see something that will slightly augment uh the mounts some way definitely like when when they mounted the raptors was there a second skill as well like or a third skill in that case because you or i don't uh, know uh, actually that's a good point uh, good oh, question oh yeah did they m mount up <laughs> the other mount? yeah they did <laughs> They were on Raptors at the start of the stream, I think. Ooh. Yeah. I found I think that the spot that. is just being, uh, it's just being YouTube right now. So. <laughs> YouTube being YouTube. Yeah, it's Australian it's internet. <laughs> I don't have Australian internet, though. <laughs> Apparently you do because your YouTube is not loading, so... Uh, get out of the Get out! <laughs> <laughs> I remember what, what... I remember what Australia... I lived in Australia. I lived... I, I know what that it is not on the Raptor Mount. Okay. Oh, maybe Aww. they haven't put it in on the wrap? Oh. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Still would like to see some Jade bot interaction with mounts because Yeah. That would good, be cool. Good thing. Good thing. Maybe they feed them or something in in like an AFK way. The, or you know, Sky Scale gets like a meteor that it spits out of its mouth. Yeah, that's just like a one shot KO kind of situation. Yeah, I think yeah. that would be balanced. Especially Insta versus death. animals in Interior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, dokey. Well, that was pretty much most of uh, most of the thing there. I actually thought we could have a little chat about the launch trailer and also the launch date, but we've been going for a while. So I wondered if anyone else needed a break because I need to go to the bathroom for like a moment and then come back. So if anyone else needs to grab a tea update, um, then that is also fine. Uh, and I'm gonna we can grab come some back more coffee. in a couple of minutes. What do you reckon, stream? Are you gonna are you good to have like a couple of minutes, and we'll come back and talk about the expansion, the release dates, and we'll have a look at the actual uh, game features trailer. That's not a release <laughs> trailer; it's a game features trailer. That's what it actually <laughs> is. But, sorry, you can go and get your tea now while I'm just talking. Okay. Crap. <laughs> I, I, I'm just talking to the stream <laughs> to fill time. Go and get a thing that you need to get. Refill your coffee and do this stuff. All right, we'll be right back. Do not go anywhere, people. Um, we're just on a miniature break. If anyone comes in and uh, is scared, we'll we'll be right back. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm just going to turn all the audio down. There we go.
I am back. Oh, excellent. I didn't mute you, though, apparently. Oh, cats! All right, brush out the cat. Oh. <laughs> Everyone would have heard, like, what you lot were talking about, if you knew what was talking about anything, but you probably oh, were just... No. I was just petting kitten. the kitten. Ah. <laughs> oh. Yes. Pete Connor <laughs> Oh, my God, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. oh, that is cute. You're looking after yes. your fostering the money. Yeah, yeah, right now. And one of them was meowing a lot, so I went and pick him up for a little bit. <laughs> I might have to dash out to bring him back at some point, but uh, it's okay. yeah. Oh. How many do you have yeah. at the moment? Five currently, yeah. <sighs> so they should uh, be able to get adopted very soon now. They've got their first shot, so it's really exciting. But they're whew, they're a lot of work. I was gonna say, yeah, that is uh, that is a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Like they were very feral when I got them, and like if you can hear him, one second. I don't know if you can hear that. He's purring a lot. <laughs> he's just so cute. Only a tiny bit when you're talking. <laughs> wow, no, he's okay. Like, I'm gonna bring him back. That is a lot of energy. <laughs> <Be heavy. laughs> yeah, very. Okay. <laughs> the microphone is cool as well. What is that in the background? I guess. Oh, that's a thingy me Jake in Australia. I don't know what what Kroof and Rook are doing. It's a didgeridoo, yeah. It's a finger magic, yeah. She's an Australian. Hey. That's true, actually. Very Australian now. <laughs> oh, yeah, they did your Did we all die at the yeah. same time? Well, you and I did, I don't know. Yeah, you two were lost. Can Kinda rather play it. missed out on the kitten. Yeah, you I, missed I out on the kitten. Yeah, sorry. That's what Lena <laughs> did. Um, can rather play that didgeridoo. <laughs> I can, yes. <gasps> but Ooh. do you That's guys want to? Yeah, I want a concert right now. Okay, okay, give me a second. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. And then we'll continue. We have a bot. I'm not showing my face doing it because I'm scared of being photoshopped sucking pasta. <laughs> uh, okay. We heard a tiny bit. We heard it for like one second and then it stopped. It was the initial. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you needed. Okay, well, we we, we believe you now. That was very That's exciting. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you did good. You did <laughs> we only that heard That was awesome. We only heard like the initial <laughs> and then it died, but we, we heard yeah. we had a little bit of sound. So that's okay. Oh crap. <laughs> it's okay. No, it was not crap. It was very, very stylish. And oh, thank you. And very good. <laughs> okay, we're gonna watch we're gonna do is we're gonna I'm gonna watch the trailer. Um We'll talk about it. So they announced uh, on the 1st, which was the release the release date of the release day, as everyone keeps saying, uh, they released a gameplay feature trailer um, and it's got loads of stuff in it. And the trailer is good. Proof, are you enjoying yourself there? Mm -hmm. I'm having a really great time. <laughs> <laughs> Mukbang Thank stream. You <laughs> Amazing. All right, I'm going to play it. By the way, I just want to say before I like, let's no, don't talk over the rest of it. The, the most hilarious thing, the best thing about this trailer is the guy at the beginning who's fishing and he's just like making these random noises and he's so excited about fishing and he's just like, ah, yeah. And then immediately that just, that whole feeling is just destroyed. That is just <laughs> literally ruined. <laughs> just like, oh, sorry. It's just funny. Uh, if you're not, if you can't see the stream. You may just have to listen, you may just hear sounds uh, for about two and a half minutes and then we can talk over it.
Ambassador's dispatch. Queen's eyes only. The Empire of Kantha is not what we remember. They are the most powerful nation on Tyria, thanks to their Jade Tech. And they don't trust us. We have to show them that we're on their side. Aetherblades are back. Now they're planning something big in Cantha. If we don't stop them, they'll plunge Tyria into war. Everything Dragon's Watch has fought for, it all comes down to this. The secrets of Kanta. The secrets of the dragons. We have to uncover them all. Before it's too late. It's a pretty damn good trailer. <laughs> it really is. It really is a good trailer. Um, oh shit! I just I think I turned you all down, but none of you spoke. I don't think during the whole thing. I just, yeah. like, that's okay. Hopefully not. I'm pretty sure you did it. I know what you mean by the model now, because I think that's Yao at the front, right? Yes. No. Yeah. That's that right. is Yao. That's Yao. Oh, right there oh with at the, the end. At the end. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Again, I'm yeah. pointing. I was like, we didn't see him again. But yeah, yeah. No, right there. Yeah. Yeah, their face does not look the same in the concept art as it does in the model that we saw today on the stream, which is deeply unfortunate. And the I rest of the everything hair. is good. The hair yeah. had like length to it and it was like very like dramatic. I was like, the concept art, I really enjoyed it. I think yeah, it looks still fine, but I had the expectation of the concept art. It was like, oh, it looks both look good, but I was like, the concept art's good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this trailer has so much stuff in it, though. This is like what we were asking for when we were talking about what we were hoping to see in regards mm. to yeah. advertising for the game, right? Like, what are the features? What's the context of what's happening there? What do we have as far as like an idea of the setting and world and the immediate threat? And it's all here and it's so great. It's, yeah. This it's is incredible. the trailer that should have been shown at the first look live stream. Because yeah. this trailer got me hype. It got yeah. me very excited for the game. And uh, typically, like, those cinematic artsy trailers are nice, but they feel like they are oftentimes more appreciated once the hype has already been generated. And yeah. I, I think that this was really what was missing. And, you know, better, late better later than never. So I'm glad that we still got this and we actually got gameplay shown in End of Dragons and especially that context of lore yeah no it just looks amazing and you, you could see like just like i just noticed maybe you had noticed it before but like when they were gliding that little jade golem mm -hmm. was around the glider so maybe there is some kind of like synergy of masteries between gliding and that little golem or something definitely we saw a little bit of like personal updraft use and uh, yeah that was like why have i never thought of that as a mastery because like gliding so often you're just like i barely missed it if i had a yeah it's like boost. and you hit yeah. <laughs> like your head just hits the board and you're like <laughs> and my head hit the wall bunk like yeah if anyone person. goes on tiktok and then there's that little bit where it looks like it almost reses you from a down state if you're like yeah. out in the world, kind of like pets sometimes do. Um, I loved like I love those little integrations. I mean, there's just so many things featured here. And even if they had, you know, released a version of this trailer that didn't have the Jade bots or had something in the middle that was, you know, just like 
a, a mystery mastery later to be revealed or you know whatever it was it's i still that, think it that's been... you that's you that's the thing i told you it is. I told you're you. right you're right you're dead on oh you're God. absolutely there <laughs> that is the that is it that is absolutely it you every time you're like oh well <laughs> What's funny is that I actually yes. got this from one of my like theater school friends who used to just all the time here. I can just go like, at you. Amazing. <laughs> I just, like, yeah, I just haven't stopped doing it ever since. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I honestly think that this trailer gives us so much grounding. The fact that the Aether Blades are going to be, it seems like, our driving force of what's happening and the antagonism here. And last we knew, you know, they were in the mists with my Trin. Um, who knows what they discovered there or what machinations they have in mind for Cantha. All the stuff about the masteries, the feature showcase. I even really, this is such a weird specific thing. I love the two shots of, um, I believe somebody caught me up on this. It's uh, the Empress, who we have an Empress, it Ooh. looks like, which I am super excited about because that is not how Inheritance traditionally ran in Cantha having an mm -hmm. empress, and then that shot of her and her half-sister, uh, June, who uh, apparently they released a bit of info on that I missed, but um, the fact that you know she's behind all of these inventions and the jade tech and kind of like Togo, who was in his brother's shadow, the fact that there's an illegitimate, mm -hmm. you know, um, illegitimate element to uh, her not being able to be recognized as, you know, an empress in her own right but being also as much of a contributor to cantha i love those two shots they did such a good job there's like a great sense of distance between them and the juxtaposition between those two characters and i, I think it's just really well done it's the uh the 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 slight there's a there's a there's a really good there's just good transitions like the actual way the film you're so right the trailer the trailer here specifically when they go from shot to shot is just really like well edited yeah. and just like the the fades and everything else like in terms of like i just got i've just got school because i went to uni when i went to uni i did video production which is editing and camera work and i did a lot of camera work and editing for a long time and i just like i really appreciate this i was like ooh. and then there's this bit where the jade bot comes across and acts as a slide transition and i'm just like i appreciate that yeah. and you've still got the same character there as well and i'm just like damn and just just some of the screen, the actual shots that they do, the small pans, the small like reveals, like this massive, this jade lump that they have, which yeah. is just like, <laughs> whoa, that the scale of that thing is ridiculous. It's so yeah. huge. If you look at the houses next to it, yeah, yeah. it's just massive. Because we've seen yeah. those houses in the previous stream now, and they're quite big. So, yeah. That's and what's really cool, like going back to that like shot right after this where like you get lifted by the jade golem oh, yeah. um it's it's really cool because a lot of people when they first came out with the x back and explain everything they're like oh you can't beat gliding and you can't beat mounts or like a turtle's not enough but like they've literally just like shown that you can like with those little golems like you, you get your own like x back masteries and it looks like it's gonna be really awesome like every little things you can do with it right that zip line get like updrafted get rezzed and more i'm guessing but yeah it's gonna be really cool it's cool as well because it mixes it with this is also like it harks you back because if you don't get the other masteries with this glider then it's selling you the expansion previously so it's like you know you've got mounts and you've got this sorry you've got the glider and you've got this extra thing you can have even more stuff i like stealth and extra etc cetera, etc cetera, if you go back and get half horns play that through that story and get that mastery so it's kind yeah. of like after selling the previous expansion which i actually think is very cheeky and very awesome way of doing it like it, it's yeah, just sure. it's really good i uh, hopefully they do that with the other but i but like siege tail as well really essentially sells previous mounts because if you but if people are talking about other mounts and they're talking about you know people just come in brand new just to end the dragons they'll be like oh man there's other mounts and they might be just as good as this this yeah. and the expansions again so they've got the funny thing is is about arena there and this is you know you're harking onto the marking that we all do um, I think that's one thing that all content creators and players of the game can all agree on. I think it, it thinks it's the only thing that everyone agrees on is how <laughs> the game is, the marking of the game could sometimes be a little bit more in 
to 2022. Um, <laughs> I've, and I don't want to hark on it too much because I, I know I do. But like they sell the game in the game. Like the game is genuinely amazing and they sell the game in the game to players who already have it. Yeah. How did they do that? I mean, that's another conversation for another time, but like it, they're just outside of the game, they don't. <laughs> There's just, the, it, it is all about what Rook was saying earlier, like, you know, how we are very much reliant upon for the advertising market of the game. Because if you think about a lot of new people that come in, probably a lot of them are through our streams and through like YouTube videos and through friends or through vo word of mouth. I was going to say voice of mouth then. Word of <laughs> mouth, voice, I guess it's the same thing. Um, but like, but that, that's how a lot of people get in. So these next, I mean, we've not got that long, three, or four, three and a half weeks until, the, until it comes out. It's going to be really interesting how that happened, like how they ramp up from there. And, you know, we talked about live stream stuff earlier. But the yeah. J-Bot stuff is just... It's, it's going to be amazing. And maybe that's like, you know, how we saw it on the, the Sky Scale. Maybe that is a mastery where you get lifted on your Sky Scale, like those like flying mounts. So I don't know, maybe mm. they'll synergize it that way, like they synergized it with, uh, with the gliding. Yeah. I think I'm actually more interested in the Jade bots from the little snippets that we actually did see of the mastery system, because I was worried it was going to be this like permanent combat situation, but it seems to be more very utility focused Specific. and actually specifically mm -hmm. helps you in, you know, the larger, you know, account wide scenario and their tag of like how to make your life, your adventuring life more convenient or something, especially having a purse size updraft, that is pretty convenient. And if it gives the mount another access to, to another skill, that's also fairly convenient. But I'm wondering what, I mean, also the convenience of getting a self res is like really nice. Yeah. So, we have, I want to see a little bit more about that self res because it's like, is it going to be too strong? I, don't know. I feel but... no more res orbs. <laughs> yeah, well, well we're still in the downstate. This is da this is from downstate. It looks like yeah, because the character yeah. I, yeah, like I you... paused it on the downstate and then the bot comes up. It looks like it looks like what I think it's going to be is another downstate skill, probably more than yeah. likely that you have the choice of using. Uh, and then maybe there's like a significant cooldown. So they come out, the bot kind of just appears and there's this just, you know, for, yeah. engin for an engineer players, like this is just like engineer expansion. It's just like you get bots, yeah. you get robots, there's, you've got your Jade Mech tech thingamajig that comes out with you running about. And you've got these, it's just, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. But Remember how yeah. I was talking about like when we were doing Mechanist and like, what if you could have another down skill to get your Mechanist to come and revive you? <laughs> Screw it, we have a Jade bot to come yeah, and revive yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting it. because I don't feel as though this Jade bot is. You know, we were trying to last week uh, theorize what they could do with this bot that would be something that was, I don't know, as we kept referring to, like last reveal before expansion worthy. And it's funny because I don't necessarily think it is something that is like mind blowing. Like, and player housing is a whole new feature that we didn't announce, but here it is. But the convenience of it cannot be denied. And depending on how it culminates or like what the actual full mastery track line is and everything, this is really nice, I think, honestly. And it, it's something, too, that Jeb, like you were saying, I think really brilliantly builds off of existing things in the game so that it is encouraging you to engage with those and acquire those and have those. And then if you've spent that time, you know, you get something more from it that makes your life just a little bit more convenient. And who doesn't like this cute little bot? It's just so adorable. Yeah. Like, depending on how they work it in, I could definitely see it being something that leads people to want to engage more and learn more about the mastery systems. Yeah, for sure. I wonder if it's going to interact with skiffs or fishing. Probably. Mm, because that's a mastery. That's a mastery and a mastery. Although I guess you could say yeah. mounts and gliders are masteries as well that would interact with each other. Yeah. And like yeah. masteries interacting with each other is just an idea, you know, just forget because we forget that, you know, even though the mounts are a separate thing, they are masteries. Like they are technically masteries. So like all of the masteries working together is kind of almost like the trace system as well. Like, you know, they've got this intermingling of skills and 
ways of being in the world, which is kind of very unique. Obviously, they're not going to chuck this stuff in World v. World and PvP. Like, I'm, I'm just yeah. expecting that to not Why? be a thing. That would be weird no. if it was in World v. World. <laughs> no, Can you imagine gonna, if the yeah, Reds... No, they're going to do it. If, what, you think so? Absolutely. What, the revive <laughs> <bot? laughs> <laughs> Sarcasm on her. <laughs> I don't know. But you know what? It would be, I gotta say, it would be a really interesting weekend for World vs. World it would, if yeah. when you're gliding, so. you could use your personal updraft to get, like, over a wall or, like, to <gasps> do something into, like... Oh, I, I still yeah. think just Yeah, fun being... things with World vs. World. Yeah, 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 I agree. I think they should ch I think they should just allow people to use everything in World v. World and just have big dome bubbles and like and stuff like that which you can destroy. Like, <laughs> I, I think they should just take World v. World to the next damn level. But that's anyway, that's a different conversation. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, oh my god, this shot again like talking about the shots from the in the trailer uh for Echovold, yes. like this whole like really gothic kind of church scene was oh. just like it, it looks completely different from the from the map we were just on like the stark difference is just like yeah and even the it screen. looks gigantic it looks so big if I you know. look at the background this is what i needed from the echo vault live stream preview like yes. this is that's the atmosphere that's the vibe that's the look right it's this dark gothic mysterious this massive towering scope like you're wandering amidst these trees like the redwoods in california or like you know any other places that we have these monumental forests in real life it is something that is it is such an interesting experience and it is just like i don't know it gives like chills you know what i mean like yeah, it's it's so it fascinating and humbling in a sense um to be surrounded by things of such big scale and history and it's it's so well done because like if you have this shot and you don't know what game you're looking at it looks like dark souls but Gil go us to yeah. a fight as well like you're like yeah. what the okay i want to go beat up a bus in there like you know because Cantha currently feels very vibrant. It feels like there's a lot of light and a lot of fun colors. And I appreciate that, but I do think that there is a need for like a juxtaposition where it's a darker atmosphere, a darker tone. And when we got the Echo Val uh, Wilds live stream, I was really expecting that. And it just felt more like a museum attraction that they were taking you through. And it's like all vibrant and like, oh, here's a graveyard, here's a historical area. And I was really... I was longing for that sense of like, oh, this place is haunted. Oh, we got to call in some exorcists. Like, this, this is not yeah, good energy here. Yeah, they could here. have done it, I, f I think, a different way. I think they were still learning how to do a map tour there as well, maybe. I'm not sure if they've done it much yeah, in the past, have they? They haven't really done map tours. They don't, they do, this is, it is a very interesting way how they do things sometimes. I know it, ESO does something very different, which is actually, I think is quite cool. They have like this big blow up stream where they reveal all the stuff and the things. And then they have a post stream, which is like community team. Um, and then they have uh, like main, like lead game designer. I'm not going to say names because Ram's titles made more sense. Um, and then they go through something like, here is a dungeon coming up in the first DLC. They'll walk you through. They won't reveal the story or anything, but they'll play it. And they will literally yeah. play it because it's on the PTR oh. next, in the next couple of days otherwise. And they might take you through maps. They might take you through an example quest. And they've just got this really natural way of doing it as well as introducing humor and everything else. And it's just like... It feels like they could learn a few lessons from different people who, from different companies who do do this, or just do it in their own way, which is unique. Like today was funny. They added, there was some humor in there. It was, you yeah. know, the, I think the map can obviously does a lot of the work itself anyway. Um, but yeah, I think with, you're right, Kruf. Like with with Echovold, they didn't really highlight this. <laughs> Yeah. they did it they did they just didn't like it might be that the trailer is purposefully lit in this way as well and like you know it, that's after effects or whatever but i feel like that is in the game like it was very bright like we were quite we did feel like we were for some of the time we were quite high up rather than down mm -hmm. in the in the roots and everything i know we started there but we kind of left there quite quickly um I would like to see. I would like to see them do. It. I would actually just like to see it again. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> just do it yeah. again. Like it would be cool if they had like a a longer stream, post stream, and they just had someone running around in the, on a mount or just some footage. Doesn't have to be everywhere. Just little bits and pieces sometimes would be cool. But 
Yeah, I mean, that's what we get in this trailer. But it was good. It was impactful. I mean, it was good. What's just so interesting to me is that I think it goes to show how you actually, like, deliver and set up like what do we want this zone to be like to embody how do we want to show it contrasting to other places in the expansion what's the hook for this zone and this is the atmosphere right so this one shot does more for me than any of the footage of them running around from the other one all it took was two seconds of this and i was like i get what you're trying to say with this zone i feel it i vibe with it i see how it contrasts with everything else so i have an idea of the different experiences i'm going to have in this expansion so, like, I'm actually excited now for Echo Vault, but I wasn't from the previous advertising. And I think, like you said, they are trying to they are trying to push forward how they do these sorts of things in live streams, which is admirable. And I'm really glad that they are doing this. Um, it will just take them a bit to figure out what exactly works for them. But I think already, like, today's stream I thought was very good and fun, and we got some good stuff from it. And, like, with this previous trailer, again, all the context is starting to come together. And I'm sure they're taking away a ton from this like release experience, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think as well, like I'm not too worried because they're not getting massive viewership from these streams. <laughs> that is the a decent is viewership. Yeah. Mm. For what it's worth, Gilmore's 2's numbers end up really spiking during these live streams. Okay, I, I, feel, I feel like we may have different uh, ideas of what a good viewership might be for, for an MMORPG on Twitch. Well, I don't know. Comparatively for, for, Guild for Guild Wars, Wars 2. 2. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, it is good. Yeah. For generally, for, for the game, is stature for where it's supposed to be, like I feel like it should be a lot more. Uh, I, I would definitely, after today as well, and and again, this could be an advertising. This could be a marketing thing as well. Something we talked about in the past. Um, I've moved everyone's faces around. No, don't do that. <laughs> oh, for all your effort. Um, <laughs> so annoying. Like the, I went onto the stream and it was two point five k, and I was like, shoot. Like that's. I was around like three point six. Like yeah, well, it was bit, post. Yeah. It was post end stream. So yeah, yeah it was that was the tail end, but Easy. still three point six. Okay. It, it's. It's really not crew, I'm sorry. It's really, it's just not like it's just not <sighs> well, that not, great. Not it, when you compare it to others, but I think there have been actual live streams during End of Dragons, which got kind of like 10, elite specs, 12, 15. Yeah, Those got a lot more. That's definitely the, it could be a story slash map. The first yeah, yeah. live stream was big. It was big. There were I'm trying remember. to remember what it fell between. Um, that one was pretty big, right? But it, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of reasons for this. <laughs> I think there's a lot of reasons. Um, like one, Guild Wars 2 has a relatively smaller directory on Twitch as a platform in general. Yeah, um, two, things like ESO and other games like that have built a massive, uh, ESO and Warframe come to mind. They have built a massive Twitch following because they do things like drops. And oftentimes people will show that's up true. only for the drops and not because they care about anything else. That's <laughs> you know true, what actually, I mean? That's yeah. true. Well, that's the thing, um, isn't it? Like the drops, that's actually a very good yeah. point. Something but to, it does, true, true, true. it incentivizes people, right? Because mm -hmm. like, if you're a player, right? And we have to think about the flow of how players have these things drawn to their attention. If you are a Twitch user and you're already using Twitch and you use Twitch to connect with Guild Wars 2, you're probably following creators and or you're curious about Guild Wars 2's presence on Twitch, right? So that audience will be there, which is probably what we're seeing right now for that like two to three K people, right? Um, but if we then look at how do people who are not already a part of that pipeline get pulled into the live stream element, that's where you have other steps, right? So like many other games will broadcast even on their launcher, like upcoming stream, you know, tune in for the first information. And that's where you'll see stuff like watch and get this minion and like here's the picture of the minion and it's gigantic or like here's the picture of the thing and people yeah. may not even have an interest in using twitch but when they go there and they realize oh they're dropping a mount skin oh yeah. you can get a special unique limited time pet from this oh like that's when they sign up to make an account so that they can get the stuff you know what i mean exactly mm -hmm. and they don't even yeah. care like i i don't like with drops like dying light like, this is how this is how it works and i like to think that i'm not that susceptible to like advertising too much but i still am like dying light <laughs> at the moment released and they literally got a mask and two knife skins or something like that and i was like i don't have a game yet i'm not sure if i'll get the game i like zombies 
But I was like, I need to go and make an account so I can just get the skins just in case I get the game. Yeah, that and part. it's just like, but then I'm boom, I'm on the website, boom, I'm getting the, the account, boom, I'm getting the emails telling me about the game. You know, there's all of these things. And yes, it's kind of, it's annoying. But like, you know, I was almost, I didn't do it in the end because I, I was like, no, I don't want another newsletter. But then, <laughs> and at the same time, I was just like, I'm glad, kind of semi glad that Guild Wars 2 don't do that. But at the same time, this is the way it is now, like to get more people involved. And they're surviving fine, it seems so. And this is where we are. And it's, uh, but for the future and like for how we would like to see more content that's relevant, if you watch um, Thingy's video, I can't say his name because I say it wrong every time he makes he makes really really good points as an outsider and it doesn't sound like he had to make much effort in terms of research to find out that the game it had a launch which was fantastic and has very very unique game features but then fell off because of end game that didn't exist it fell off because you know the game didn't have the advertising it needed to push such awesome parts of the game forward to people who would be really interested in it and it was talking about like, it was awesome to see the passion he had for like the yeah. fact that there were events and hearts and how it was just done differently and the player like creating a character like the artwork that came on the stream it was just like it was such a good video to watch like if you ever want to watch like someone be so excited about guild wars 2 in the beginning i was just like he was cool he's just being genuine and authentic and that it was just like damn this guy is really enjoying just character creation i can't wait till he gets into the game do you know what i mean and like how different it's gonna be and he's just like this is just different. This is just different from any any other MMORPG. And I'm like, yes, it is. Someone tell other people. They're like, thank you for, very much. Like, that's cool. It's frustrating. I mean, Sorry. I'm in that's, the trenches yeah, trying to is. advertise Guild Wars 2. I was on TikTok last night, and I was just commenting about Guild Wars 2. <laughs> I'm in the trenches. Yeah. Well, I'm doing cool. my part. There's so I'm not even going to talk about what the TikTok was. <laughs> what was so, the TikTok? So, so. <laughs> Sorry. That's for late night stream. <laughs> There's so, so, so much that goes into this, right? And like Guild Wars 2 is not the only company that's facing this question right now, which I think is very yeah. important mm -hmm. to mention. Like there are so many games that are trying right now to figure out how do we monopolize things like content creators. You know, I previously critiqued Final Fantasy 14 and the fact that they have no content creator program. It is like the most arcane, backwards, confusing thing ever to figure out how in the world you contact anyone to get connected to this game because they have one, offices universally and the game is made in Japan. And mm -hmm. two, like they they have not, they don't necessarily need the traction because they are such a big presence with Square Enix backing them and Final Fantasy as a franchise existing that like they have not been forced to innovate as much i think as other yeah. companies and that's not to say that there aren't people on their team that are very excited about innovating it's just that the pressure from higher ups to innovate it's not there right because for them it's like we're fine and look at our stats we're better than ever and our numbers are great right but then you have all these other companies that are trying to figure out how to innovate um, and Guild Wars 2 is grappling with that question right now, which is great. And they have a fantastic partnership program, which is great. But it is like, it is a huge cumulative thing, right? Drops are not the only solution that companies have come up for with this, right? Engaging and interacting with things like partnership stuff, things like the World Plays event with ESO. I thought that was brilliant to yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Incentivizing new streamers to come in and play the game, uh, you know, uh, featuring even on things like these live streams, right? Reaching out to various partners to be like, hey, we're going to do uh, perks for co streaming it, or we're going to do all these sorts of things, right? Um, or here's a fun game your community can play while we do this, or whatever it is, right? Like, there's so many ways that people are doing this. Um, and then on top of all of this, there's an entire other element which is the community itself right yes i think that we as players have to be just as engaged in promoting and putting forth the good of this game as we are on making any threads about the bad in this game um because i think yeah. a huge part of it is that publication or like advertising and all sorts of stuff and communication in guild wars 2 did drop off and there was this unfortunate period but during that period as well so many people rallied behind you know just lambasting and flooding the internet with negativity about the game um some of which is valid critique and much of which does nothing but to undermine the interest anyone might have in joining this game yeah, that's true. <laughs> 
So it's also about like, it's about bridging that gap on both sides so that like we as creators are constantly reaching out to other people. Mm. I talk to other creators all the time about Guild Wars 2 and I'm like, hey, if you found it frustrating working with other companies, ArenaNet has been amazing yeah, as players reaching out to bring friends in. It's about so many different facets of this. And also all of us speaking up on the things that we like about this game so that mm. when new players go to look for it, they see it like, it's so many things. It's so many things. I'm sorry, Rob. I think you were going to say something before I went off again. Please. No, 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 it's okay. No. First of all, that was beautiful. But then, I, like, I agree with you. Like, I, on on there, like, so you know how Belu Belular Belular's video was uh, posted on uh, on Reddit. A lot of people like were like, "Yeah, it's a shame because no one outside of Guild Wars Two knows Guild Wars Two." And like it's such a it's such a true thing. Like whenever you hear about MMOs, you hear WoW, you hear like Final Fantasy, ESO, but you you never hear Guild Wars 2. And it's one of the most beautifully unique game ever. And it's it's a shame. It's it really is a big shame. Like, and for example, today that if Jebro hadn't told me, hey, there is going to be a stream, uh, like a live stream of Guild Wars 2 today. Do you want to react? to it i didn't know there was one like yeah they posted a poster like months ago but they don't do anything to remind people or to mm -hmm. advertise that there's going to be a stream so i think that's why like the viewership because it was quite low like 3k yes it's it's a lot compared to us but like it's quite low like so yeah i think like i, I found that guild wars 2 is the type of game where people people have it in their subconscious because when I talk to other people, I'm like, oh, yeah, Guild Wars 2. They're like, oh, my God, I, I haven't heard about that game in so long. It's yeah, is it Guild dead? Wars 2. <laughs> I don't often get as a dead, but I get like Guild Wars 2. People remember that name to some extent. It's just that yeah. they're not often reminded, as you were saying, Rava, of the game mm -hmm. where, as we see World of Warcraft or Final Fantasy, they have the marketing uh, strategy down to always be drawing in those like look at this awesome lore actiony cinematic trailer like look at this gameplay trailer look at the new classes that we're inputting look at the new spell effects and all that stuff all the zones and Guild Wars 2 tries to to mimic those things but when it comes to live events they, they've kind of not hit the nail on the head uh, yeah. in recent years but I really enjoyed Heart of Thorns I don't know I, I found Heart of Thorns period to be pretty energetic so yeah the hype around heart of thorn was much bigger it feels like and the thing is like there's so many um there's so many little nuggets in guild wars 2 that people really don't know about like you hear a lot of like you know how we have those what are they called like refugees that went to fff like to, that went mm -hmm. to uh, final fantasy mm -hmm. and all of them i've heard like especially like a lot of my friends that went to final fantasies are raiders and they all told me the same thing. They're like, yeah, I play Final Fantasy, but I miss the uh, dynamic combat like play of Guild Wars 2. And that's something you hear everywhere, but no one knows about it because like, you know, no one like advertises it. And like, that's something that a lot of players can't find in any other MMRs. And but it's yet... so simple because like you would think that would be the very first thing advertised because it's a video game. What is the gameplay? How do you actually go about interacting with this product? And to just slightly compare it to another uh, upcoming MMO, Lost Ark. One reason why I'm so interested in Lost Ark is because they're really hitting home and driving driving in that their combat is extremely action oriented and a, a spectacle so just for that simple aspect of how you operate with the game i'm suddenly like oh i really need to try lost ark to at least like see what it's like and get worse to i think they they always say they have dynamic combat but they don't really show it off in show the greatest it, light yeah. no like and yeah like the only thing thing or like entity that shows it is mostly like youtubers and streamers when people watch us play like a lot of new viewers are like wow the, like the way the combat is done it's so interactive or it's so responsive and reactive but when you look at like if you go to the guild wars 2 youtube and you look at their videos you never see that like e like even the pvp it's incredible like the way well let's not talk about some issues with pvp but like in itself the combat is great 
I'm not talking about the environment, but the combat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like true. it's yeah. just like it's just it's such a like a golden nugget. Like I, I I watch I've never played any other MMOs, but I do watch like certain streamers that play ESO. Like I've watched Jer play ESO, Rook. I've watched you play Final Fantasy, and I look at it and it looks beautiful and stuff. But it's like it looks very slow compared to Guild Wars Two. You know, it's like. Oh, but you just did an attack, but what? Like, so, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it is. It's a totally different pacing. But part yeah. of that is, like, the way that you... I'm trying to think of good words to use for this. What good words can I use for this? Um, Beautiful. Good. Brilliant. <laughs> part of it is Bombastic. the way that you translate what's happening to viewers who don't have a basis of understanding, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Like, the amount of times that I have pitched a meta event to people <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> and like people will come in and they're like what's happening and i'm like <laughs> all right you know how you've always wanted like in your mind you think like when you start an mmo and you're going i'm going to be going up against these huge threats with all these people around the world and we're going to be taking down this massive dragon and then you get into mmos and you realize like Oh, well, there's limitations. They can't wow. realize it. There's, you know, oh, but we're just like eight of us in an arena. I was like, Guild Wars 2 said, to hell with that. And they made meta events. And like, these, you want to fight a dragon? There is the dragon. And I like panned <laughs> the dragon. I'm like, you want to wage war across an entire map? Here's the 200 people waging war with me across this map right now. And like, <laughs> That's the kind of connection that I think people are looking for. I mean, just like you said, right, Kruf? These are my hand gestures to yeah. help you build the mental Pow. landscape. Bam! Um, but it's Pow. like, Kruf, you know, Lost Ark is catching you because they are showing something and then they are within that context pairing with it what you need to understand about yeah. it. So it's like, oh, they dodged, you know, dodge your enemies lightning fast and you know turn around to turn the tides and then here's the other thing right so it's about creating a language both visual and then also in whatever way you know overlay voice overlay um context of setting what's the question or what's the thing that people desire or how do you answer that in your game so it's all of those things and i think that's been a big learning experience from a lot of these live streams in that some of them have not necessarily been billed in such a way that, like we talked about, if you are a new player looking in, you are being sold on what's happening. You know, if you're an old player, they're like, there's new metas. And you're like, cool. But if you're a new player, you're going... What? What's uh... a meta? And can you show me one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. Like, so... I think, like, yeah. Gilwes is very lucky to have such a, like like people like really good content creators like even partners or non-partners because we like really try to showcase what they don't showcase um but it's a shame because i think like it needs to be more and it needs to be on both sides because it's mm. it is an incredible game at the end of the day it's it's beautifully artistic the music is beautiful the combat is incredible the events like it is a great game it's just like it's not showcase probably is pretty much having like beautiful cinderella in like shitty clothes oh sorry uh <laughs> bad clothes <laughs> that's my yeah. first swore <laughs> that is very good actually i'm very proud of you i swore earlier you. okay i should promote that creators more i mean there is there is uh, arguably there there is that i mean i think um i've got to be careful about that creative <laughs> the partner program aspect of it but like uh yes I would yeah. just say that. I would say that. Yes. Well, um, all of that to say, and all of this discussion aside, which we've talked about, but you know, we we constantly re-talk about and contextualize in different ways. This mm. piece, this trailer, yeah, this I thought was good. Pretty good. It it. showed features. It showed the context. This again, to me, I was like, yes, 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 yes. This is exactly what we've been asking for, in a sense. Um, there is the context and there were some great selling features including this incredible shot of echo vault you know yeah okay rather counter as well in the, in the, in oh, the stream no. thank you very much as well rook <laughs> you've been here for and been doing this for quite a while so you know you you're steering us back you are the uh rudder slash steering stick that was a compliment 
I don't know if this is better or worse than the thinly veiled, sassy insults from earlier, but I'll take it. Thank you, Jebro. I do what I can. Straight from the heart. Not Straight managed. from the heart, that one. Mana junkies. <laughs> what? Rotten <laughs> Novus. <laughs> No okay, it's everybody. No no okay, play the trailer. For that play one. the trailer. Show me the whale. Let's get on to the next. One. You're Love on you. Mm -hmm. Love you all too. <laughs> I really love the way Jebra gleefully giggles. <laughs> it's, very, it's very good. <laughs> oh, looks a little bit like Rata Novus, actually. But uh, I really that's all i wanted to say okay <laughs> but i really crew 2022 mm -hmm. <laughs> i felt weird just jumping directly to the next thing that i wanted to say so was, my brain was trying to debate if i should continue to speak or not let's so look the, at yeah. the let's look at the <laughs> uh. <laughs> i wanted to talk about the trailer but i was like are we still in this round of Nuvis thing is it too fast we for a little <laughs> yes bit. We for a please little talk bit. about the trailer please i was talk actually about gonna the trailer. Pl i'm playing the trailer now so that you can see the the uh contrast between the different zones that they actually show because i think they showed that i think that's new kind of then there's um well that's new kind of but if look I at the difference critique, if i were to critique yeah. one thing about this trailer it was the guild hall I think they could have cut that section. It it really it felt very main, fillery. It, but game like no, no. What, I know why no? it was there. No. I, I actually had several people say that they thought the guild hall, like after this, they're like, the guild hall looks so beautiful. I'm really excited about it. I even saw in discords that people were like, so we're switching to the guild hall, right? Um, not my discord, other discords, just you know, other things that I'm a part of. Um, so it's there. I mean, we talked about this last episode. I don't know if we have to rehash it all. I I don't know. I think the guild hall needs to be expanded upon in some way, shape, or form to really be a true selling feature of the game. Yeah. But I do think it's beautiful. And I think that the environmental elements that have been so strong in other parts of what we've seen, also strong in this. Look at the Ava Blade ship as well. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think the guild hall deserves a, a snippet. But I'm, it. it can be in the trailer, but the shots that they chose, I think, really. Oh yeah, it's um, still the same crystal, like that you see, like yeah. Yeah, it's it would have been better too. It, yeah. it was a shot yeah. of a hallway, and it's like, why not actually have like showcase the arena with people fighting in it? Some some. Well, they should showcase the encounter to get it, probably. That yeah. and also like a you know having a, a cinematic that shows the structuring, like they did in Heart of Thorns, when like oh, the buildings yeah. are built up. Yeah, that was really this, good. Yeah. And also, That's we didn't true. think about that. That is going to be a part of this guild hall because each expansion has those cinematics. Um, but yeah, this the shots that they chose for this, they it felt flat. It was just, mm -hmm. it took me out of the, yeah. the hype a little bit. That's fair. And Kruf, you know what? Yeah, Great fair. point building off of what we literally just talked about. Like, do they show anything about the functionality of a guild hall for players that have never right. seen the game? No. And like, no. if they'd had something like the arena, if they'd had something, you know, where they, you know, it pops up and they say now like capture with, you know, capture the new guild hall with a group of two to whatever you know like whatever they were gonna say and then they said an unlock for your guild um you know the ability to harvest get buffs do whatever right like that would be selling it that extra step I yeah think. Mm. yeah so uh, great great recommendations mm. but hey. the, like further on there is a sorry uh cutting huh? out but there's another um uh, shot of echo Vault, it seems like with that azure face that you see a bit yes. later like there's mm. like this uh yeah, we're gonna see it in two seconds. There's the Aether Blade, so they they've added they've got them in there. So there you go. They crashed obviously. They seem to be like they propped up all of that very quickly. Like the scaffolding around that crashed I, airship. I think well, I mean that's I don't know if that's the same is that the same issue? I mean it might be. I think the I think trailers when they, they have the overarching story, right? So they've been there for a little yeah, bit of time and all that kind of stuff. I know you're taking the piss. So <laughs> <laughs> I love to take the piss. <laughs> oh boy yeah no one understands no one understands what that means don't worry no we i love got it, it. it's like you're messing like, yeah, like you're, you're messing somebody fun. about oh no yeah. yeah i know you will yeah. know what it means but i don't think anyone <laughs> actually understands why that is the the, word, the, the the reason i'm not sure that's this is the place to talk about that uh but yes the asura looks <laughs> amazing <laughs> Although we could, you know, we we teeter on the edge of, of such things. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, like, bring us after we, do teeter. Put it. we do. Um, 
I I love this shot of the Asura who's teetering on the edge. Um, it's so cinematic. Like the zoom yeah. in and the pupils dilating and the backdrop. He's got I guess, oh my expression. god, and the eyes yeah. are different colors. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't it looks so badass like it's actually it's 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 weird to say that but this is actually one of my favorite shot in that trailer i it's don't know it's why it's because that's why it is uh, I mean, yeah I sure think... it's the reason <laughs> that is the legitimate reason why it gives a lot of lore <laughs> lore feelings to me because they they've talked about anka as being like this really uh this this asura that hates almost the civilization's direction with the elder dragons so i'm really interested to see with this shot it, it feels like she's not going to just be my trin's second hand she might actually like overtake my trin or has like a larger plan might do some backstabbing so i'm really interested to see where they go with this character mm -hmm. it's kind of cool to see like an evilly kind of like a sura do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I know yeah, we see them a lot. facial expression. Yeah, 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 exactly. I know we see him like with Inquest and, and whatever, but like it's good to see like a main main character, I guess. I guess sometimes I forget about some of the story. There is there is a Sura who are a little bit rude in places. Um, <laughs> I like, I really like this shot of like, it gives you the a good scope of like the Aether Blades and how big they've kind of, become or how big they are just as like this faction um i i, I feel like as well like so i don't know if anyone else feels like this in terms of expansion wise but if you think about expansions and you think about half horns was mordramoth right dragon invasion of like literally mordramoth like awakening and like bringing Silvari back to like, you know, Silvari confused about who they are, all this massive story, like around, and this, this is literally Morton Moff was just, just a huge presence in the game, right? In the expansion. Yeah. Path of Fire, you've got a literal god, Balthazar. End of Dragons has the hint of the dragons and everything else and where we're going in the name, it's mostly about the JTEC and the Aether Blades, though, where we're sold on. And obviously, they can be there. Obviously, we're going to have to, we can discuss that and what. But there is that sense for me that that, it, that, that is, there is something missing. Like, there is a, like, an, a throw to, like, maybe End of Dragons. The relation of what that means to this expansion feels a little tiny bit lost. And I don't know if that makes any sense. Does that make any sense? Like the title of the mm, expansion yes. and then the actual trailer, yeah. like transferring <laughs> that. Like, where is it? Like, you know, if you're a new <laughs> player, like in the like End of Dragons and you're like, there's no now dragons. That you, <laughs> in now this that trailer. you mention it. Do you know I, what I mean? No, now that you mention it, if I were to watch like the teaser trailer and the official release trailer uh, or the the reveal trailer and then this one, they feel like two separate expansions in a way. Yeah, Which they do. Interesting, because, you know, there might be that like over overarching narrative of the dragons, which they kind of introduced first. And then they're kind of introducing this one secondary to kind of just have a main antagonist. But it. It is strange. It is a little like a two pronged narrative system. I, well, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I don't know, like maybe like, you know how there's like this whole like fan theory about like how the logo of End of Dragons is a water dragon and then there's the whole mm -hmm. bubbles thing and how like they're mm -hmm. releasing the legendary skins that has all the dragons, but the water dragon is in like not in it. Maybe it has something to do with this where like the main end of dragon will be like oh we we ended revealing all the dragons that's Abs the end of that's dragons it. i mean and we've seen it and we saw it in and that's what Kruf is kind of saying as well like the teaser trailer actually gave us the most information that yeah. links directly to the title of the expansion <laughs> but yeah, then not this... mentioned at all ever since that moment like we just haven't had anything teased i guess and... In this trailer, we have one line at the very end that I think is the most indicative, where they say like something to to reveal the secrets of Cantha, to find the secrets of the Elder Dragons, or mm. whatever, like where yes. it all came from, or or like something with that. So that's true. It's there, and there are components that I agree. It seems like they're going to be using. I mean, there's something to be said as well about my trans involvement with Scarlet Briar. 
and Scarlet Briar's connection and or madness that was caused by this revealing of the fabric of the universe. Mm. Um, uh, something to be said about my trend being in the mists for so long with the Aether Blades. But again, like you pointed out, Jeb, are we getting this set up to put this all together? I mean, in this trailer, we don't even have the mysterious draconic voice or Kunavang or anything that seems or to connect Aureen. those two. Or or yeah, Reen, no, you know, or Reen. Yeah, no, where the flipping hell is No there. one's in there. Kate is there. Which Kate is, really is there. That's true. There isn't any main characters, like many main characters in there either. And we do that's see Kaz and Jory, which I was excited about. Oh, like they true, seem yeah. to be approaching the throne and then they show up in that yeah. last, you know, okay, that last shot. But I would love to actually see, this would be my request. I wish that they had like, <laughs> like you said, Kruf, I wish they had released this trailer first. And then when we got a cinematic trailer, the cinematic trailer, they could even use a ton of the scenes that are in there. But I really wish it had been something uh, that actually sets this up, right? Like, like we talked about previously when I did my mock, my mock uh, off the top of my head thing uh, for a trailer run, but where it was like, you know, the elder dragons, what do we know about them? This, 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 this. <laughs> yeah. Like we fought them and led to the, you know, got to this point, but what does it mean for Tyria if we continue to destroy the one source of replenishing magic that like, there's the context. <laughs> Like, that's yeah. the framing. Or even yeah. if this was all from Orin's perspective, where she's like, you know, I was born and raised at your hand, and I came into a world <laughs> in which my people and yours were in great conflict. Like, the framing is something we are being left to fill in ourselves as players who have the context of lore. But again, for a new player looking at it, do they have any context of what has led us here or what journey? No, mm. no, no, I don't think so. This is the closest we've come to it, this trailer. And it is yeah. a features, it is a f specifically features trailer as well, but they have True. decided to put story elements in there. So it's kind of yeah. like, and story is a feature as well. Like that is a feature it's of a big feature. Like, It's a big, it's the main, one of the main features. Yeah. So like, there's definitely something. And I think um, Galadrigal as well said, you know, again, you know, what you said, Rook, all of those ideas, they're so good. Like, there's so there's so much awesome stuff in there. But if you're a new player and you've got flipping Scooby-Doo, what's going on? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's, it's yeah. like Cogni rhyming slang crew from <laughs> Rhymes with Clue. That's the, that's what yeah. that's what slang is. Um, Courtney Ryan is slang anyway. Um, I will say that you kind of hinted hinted about this, and like the other expansions, we had very large enemies, and this mm -hmm. one it seems to be just Aether Blades. I kind of think that this is really smart for them to take it down a notch, especially if they want to end the storyline of the dragons. I think we'll have to go back to a more human to human or human to humanoid enemy that's a bit more relatable than mm. these gargantuan enemies that you know we have no direct tie to so it is smart to at least be introducing the aether blades in this expansion if they want guild wars 2 to continue into season six and expansions after that to set up a prolonged enemy in the future makes me think like it made me when I first was talking about this just now because I've not, not really had these thoughts before until we we're watching the trailer again. But just about how I guess, like even like the thinking about the living story after this, like this could be the start of End of Dragons. It doesn't necessarily have to even be the yeah. whole encompass story. Like it could be the story because they've really harped on the Aether Blade part of this. So maybe even though it's like. I guess that's part of part of my thought and feeling of this, but like maybe I don't know. It's it's just interesting to figure. I mean, I'm really excited for all the story. I think it's going to be an. I think it's going to be. I feel like it's going to be one of the best stories they're going to tell. I think it's going to be very challenging for them to make other stories be as epic as the dragon stories. That is my concern, and I think that yeah. is where I am losing it with a little bit with this trailer. I'm like human beings and tech. We got flipping dragons like that can take over stuff. Yeah, like you know they can literally like make people. Do you know what I mean? That like, we've had but flipping Krakatoric and we've had like Zaitan and like you know Living Dead and stuff like that. All that stuff is just so it's smart. I know what you mean. It's smart to introduce it in this expansion because it makes the the one aspect of people saying it's not as epic is only the initial reaction to hearing that we aren't doing more dragons. So once, mm -hmm. if they're tying it yeah. into the expansion with dragons, 
we'll kind of settle that, but we'll already have that experience of like the Aether Blade. So it hopefully will feel much more natural to go away from the dragon storyline rather than just being like, well, now these expansions feel less epic because it's a, it's a very stark change. Yeah, I mean, the dragons are phenomenal because of their scale and scope. And I mean, dragons are just a staple of fantasy and you all know yeah. that I'm obsessed with them. Yeah. So I love it <laughs> because I do think they are fascinating and interesting creatures and the way that they're reimagined is really engaging. But I do also think there's something very clever to be said about them deciding to end this because there's only so many times that you can be like, what's the threat, dragon? And then you go, Agreed, yes. Okay. Dragon. Um, so to me, I think that having this culminate in a greater narrative, having a liaison in a character like Orin, again, where we are giving voice to creatures that for a while we thought may just be far more animalistic than they were intelligent. Like all yeah. these different things that I think they've really built out to expand this and explain and give context. I have no doubt that this expansion story is going to be phenomenal. This team is like, Really, I really, really believe that even with some of the limitations and things that happened with Icebird Saga, I think we are in like a peak era for storytelling in Guild Wars 2. I think the Icebird Saga stuff was time constraints and other issues with juggling all sorts of other things and the expansion. But like Living Season 4, all of these improvements, all of this storytelling, the ways they've been bringing it together with maps, this is such a good time for the story. And I really think that End of Dragons is going to be fantastic. It's just hard for people to really get a sense right now with the way that it's being framed in some yeah. of these trailers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like I said, this trailer even felt better. I like it. I feel overall this is much like a stronger presentation of the expansion overall. Um, even though I think the graphics of the first trailer were stunning and I adore them. Yeah, it's just like the the story is not being sold in a way that I think the actual final product is going to actually deliver to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like knowing Guild Wars Two, it's gonna there's gonna be a massive cl cliffhanger at some point. Like, or oh, either yeah. that, or we're gonna just be blown away by something. Like, they're really good. At, like, it it's like it's their downfall, but it's also their like greatest strengths. Where like you look at the story, and all of a sudden something happens, and you're like, okay, I did not expect that. And like, yeah. you, you, or or you're left hanging and like, it's such a good, like, oh, I can't wait for the rest type of thing. So mm. I think that's definitely going to happen where either bubbles going to show up at the end or in the middle or something epic's going to happen. And they just don't want to show it yet because otherwise it just ruins their hype, right? And especially with everybody just like, kind of like, frame pausing everything <laughs> happening. So yeah. It's difficult. It's difficult because like... Yeah, you want to appeal to the people in the game still and you're, you're hiding this stuff and they know all the intricacies and the way that you tell the story. But I, I, I think I always think that I'm just like, how, how do we get new people to play and like continue this? Because like it can't continue if they don't get more people. And I think, you know, it's going to be, maybe they can, maybe, and I don't know the numbers and the information. Uh, there's actually a cool shot I need to go back to here. We'll talk about that in a sec. Um... But yeah, I, I I don't want to hark on marking too much, but like <laughs> the, the you know, I keep saying that. But the trailer is good. It's a good features trailer. I think the the launch trailer. I don't have we got have we had an official launch launch trailer? I don't think we've had like an official launch no. launch trailer. That'd be closer. Launch, we get launch trailers every expansion, but we haven't gotten one this yet. Probably yeah, like, like the week specific. of. Probably it'll drop probably like Sunday night or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, sometimes launch trailers actually release on the day of launch. Funnily enough, it because be, it's a launch. Be. So for some games, it's weird. Um, okay, there was actually. I'm not going in any specific order. It's just because it actually came up. Um, there is a very interesting conversation I think I kind of had with um, Mark Clark on Twitter, and it was about the it was about Timey and the boots, like the jade boots they've got on. Um, and they're kind of it's on the stream right now, and she can't she so she can't walk around for very long because of her condition. But we were talking about the fact that maybe, you know, she's got these, this jade tech that's, you know, helped her to walk around and be more and have more access to stuff. And we were talking about the idea of like, you know, the water dragon and curing 
Tyree and stuff, and I was like, I don't think that would be something that Arena Net would do. I don't think that would actually be a bad idea. I don't idea. see how the water dragon would. We don't have anything on the water dragon, so I don't know its motives or anything. But it, having it was Jade more Tech. Of, yeah, I mean the Jade Tech, yeah. Sorry, go. Yeah. I haven't seen Scruffy in. I haven't seen Scruffy in so long. <laughs> Scruffy has to destroyed, ask. not been any of the first look, I, not even in this trailer. So maybe, maybe Scruffy's around and then she gets some like braces to assist with her mobility and she's able to just more freely like w walk around or, or run or not necessarily need to rely on Scruffy as much. Um, but yeah, they look different. So they, they could be like something to assist her. I mean, we've yeah. seen prosthetics with arms and stuff because that's what Fingerjig yeah. is. There's yeah. a, I think there's a ton of possibilities that really it's just up to what they want to explore with this, right? Mm -hmm. I think that um, we know that Jade harbors a great deal of power and magical energy. We know that at least Harbingers seem to use it in a corrosive manner, but is there a way that you could use it in a repairing manner or like manipulate it in a sense where it could like maintain or empower her body? Um, is there something to be said as well about whatever happened with... Um, Oh gosh, the what am I looking for? The Jade Wind and the idea that like it put things in a state of stasis. And is it possible that they could halt the progression of her disease by like somehow tapping into that stasis force? I don't know. Like, um, there's there's a lot of ways I think that they could go with this, or just like as simple as yes, reinforcing her um physically with some of these pieces. Uh, whether or not bubbles, I mean, again, the dragons all have dominion over something and the way that they use their magic, we've seen that it can be very bad, but we've seen that it can also be good. I mean, if anything, Orin's power seems to have an ability to heal or reflect or redirect or, um, so it's very possible that there too, there could be something like healing wise. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's impossible to think that one of the dragons would be able to do something other than corrode, destroy, or, you know, manip manipulate, or... Yeah, and burn. it would be interesting uh, if that one time where you expect the dragon to be the meanie, the dragon's actually nice, you know, like, yeah. that could be the, like, cliffhanger <laughs> where, like, oh, by the way, I am nice, my name is Bubbles, like, you never know. Do you like to come in and have some boba tea? I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. What? <Yeah. laughs> I was obsessed with Boba Tea. Um, but, like, I, I think the main... The main reason I was thinking about this was actually uh, thinking about representation in games as well. Uh, is my big thing about this. The reason why I was like, you know, Arena... Arena... <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna f I, re I think Arena actually does represent part of the community as well, to be fair. Um, but like, I think Timey specifically does represent part of the community as well. Like people with disabilities, people with, uh, different, you know, life ordering conditions and concerns. Um, I think, you know, if they just magically cured this, this person, I think you would remove a lot of the connection for a lot of people. I know, I know yeah. in the game, in terms of like, you know, there's a lot of vocality about the fact that a lot of people don't actually like t uh, timey from other ends of the scale. <laughs> like, you know, there what, are who? people- I will beat them up. Who does not like timey? <laughs> I'm, not gonna t I'm not gonna say names. <laughs> oh, she is then. precious and brilliant <laughs> and adorable. I, I like will go hunt them down. I do like timey, <laughs> yes, but there are people. And, and like, I actually think that them curing characters with uh, with such a because you know we don't have that representation in many games here so um brought in like uh npcs and wheelchairs and other, and other stuff like that so it's been it's actually really really good to see this kind of character in, in guild wars 2 and see that there's they're still powerful and part of an important and and that's an important representation i think we should keep um which is why my argument was like i don't think they would because our arena net our arena net uh, and if they did that, I'd be disappointed. But you know, yeah, 
and no, it's good if they keep that yeah like you said it's something like it's like a lot of people i'm gonna get a bit controversial but a lot of people don't like bram they call him a, a whiny Period. like character but like if you think about it like it is a representation sometimes of mental health like what he's going through and stuff like this like he's struggling and yeah like struggling is not like this like glorified thing that you see in movies where when you have someone with depression he's cute and like he's still hot or something like you know it's and so like when people bash on bram for like being whiny it's like dude that's literally some it's not whiny it's like struggling through life and it's the reality of things thank and- you it's very true <laughs> no, but- yes. you know, we do like, bash on the yeah it's very the thing true is- you don't have to like him as a character. You know what I mean? Like, and I try to tell everybody, like, not everyone has to be likable because none of us are likable 100% of the time, you know? And yeah, like, you were so about, right like... because, <laughs> I know, except for Deborah, except for Deborah. Um, but like, sometimes people do respond to loss, tragedy, or mental health struggles in a terrible, self-destructive, mm-hmm. awful yeah. way. Yeah. Sometimes they do take it out on others irrationally sometimes they do misdirect their anger and lash out and i think it is important to have those stories please continue rava i just love what you were saying that's that's true like it's just like a lot of people do not like characters like specifically in the story but it's like those characters like they actually have a backbone and they actually have a story that like shows like for example a lot of people like like kanak but a lot of them say he's too sarcastic but maybe that's how he hides like the trauma that he like you know he went through and stuff and it's just like Mm -hmm. exactly yeah no I'm, I'm this is why you are here rather this is why you are part of this podcast i appreciate <laughs> very much what you said because i i think i even forget that when we're telling stories that you know often the characters that are the most it the most well i would say most well written are probably the ones you dislike that's such a bad sentence <laughs> like, no, the but most it's true. Well written. yeah they've got depth to them they actually it's easy to write a hero like you know yeah. most of the time you know what do they do they're really good at stuff and then they can do the thing at the end and cool like you know that isn't a character with depth or like personality yeah. or a sense of like you say trauma which is you know i see this every time with clients i have you know they're good people they they're funny they they're human beings but you know sometimes they can wind me the hell up or they can wind, you know they're poorly behaved <laughs> or they can do other things you know that aren't yeah that's why they're in counseling because you know they've they've got shit that's going on with them trauma that's affected how they are you know um and it's a very good point especially with bram as well because he (laughs) yeah (laughs) he has his moments and like you say like he's literally if you think about that guy like in the story like he's had the most crap happen to him he lost his yeah, mom exactly. you know he lost his mom and became a champion of an evil fire dragon i mean jesus this poor guy like you know wonder he's a bit of a dick like do you know what i mean like he's got because like he's got so much going on with him and just calling him a dick is yeah. probably not great but like <laughs> it is just do you, do you know what i mean like i mean yeah. that's a really really good point and um, I think I'm Bram. Yeah. I'm a bit more of a centrist when it comes to Bram. I see both the negative and the positive. My critique is that they keep writing him in that direction when it might not necessarily be necessary. So it's kind of like you are just reintroducing him into the same scenarios for what doesn't seem to be always great reasons. But I do think his reactions are are totally logical. Just his actions feel sometimes repetitive, which is, I think, but- what... Some people. No, I think that's fair. That's, yeah, like, I agree with you, and that's totally true. But then then again, like, life is not... Like, I, what I like about Gables 2 is sometimes, like, it can be very representative of, like, you know, life. Like, you know, they have Taimi, who's, like, has a disability. They've introduced new, like, faces to, like, represent a wider range of people. And then there is, like, uh, those characters that... Yeah, it's annoying. Like you want Bram to, you want to shake him up and be like, "Yo, wake the," f-, you know, yeah. and do something about your life. But the problem is, life is not like this. Some people will struggle with depression for like years before they decide to like do something about it, and some won't even do something about it because the world is too heavy. And so it is yeah. frustrating. But at the same time, it is reality. And it's not because this guy's beating a dragon that he should, like, 
you know, wake up and change his life and not be the whiny person that he is. Yeah, it's a balance, right? Like, I think I love both sides of this conversation because, Kruf, cool. I agree with you in that, like, from a narrative standpoint, as we tell stories in games, right, stagnancy in any form is something that leads to repeated player experiences. It can lead to, like, a numbness or frustration with something. Um, and especially when you're working very closely with a character, I think that, you know, again, having that exact same kind of arc over a long period of time is something that absolutely I think is critiquable from that regard in that you should be having varied experiences and we as people like to have arcs of some way, shape or form, right? On the other hand, I completely agree with Rava in that there are people who repeat the exact same patterns in their life over and over and over and over and over. And that that's why, you know, mental health is such an important thing to talk about from the sense that sometimes we need outside help or outside perspective to break our own patterns, cycles, um, you know, to have support and strength against the things we're fighting against. And one of the things I think is most unfortunate about Bram is that I really think he actually had a, a good on paper in concept arc in Iceberg Saga that he had this like, reconciliation and idea and this growth as he you know assumes the responsibility he once shirked as he owns up to some of the things that he had done but unfortunately because of some of the pitfalls there that we've talked about i don't think it gets fully realized in a way that was truly satisfying for many players yeah. but it's there and there are some great pivotal scenes like the scene where he confronts and decides to become the champion where you know he admits what he has done in many ways and he has to finally get over himself in a sense um in realizing that like like, you know, he has always tried to be this thing or, you know, live up to a certain perspective of a thing, but really what he needs to be is himself and he needs to figure out how he can operate as a human being um, and live up to only the things that he needs to and like his own, his own goals and dreams and hopes and to be considerate of others with that. Um, like, so there's a lot of good stuff there, but all of this to say, Timey is a character that I was surprised to see in this final shot of the trailer because we the last we really really had a timey story beat that i can remember that was like a really strong one was at the end when you leave off on this note about her dealing with this lifelong illness and what that yeah. could mean long term so um time is another fascinating character and i love her and i think people probably just hate on her because she's young and upbeat and you know, like sometimes people have issues with characters like that where they find them annoying or obnoxious or female voices in particular, which yeah. is a real thing. And it, yeah. it's oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. how you I can, can take the remember. same text for two characters, <laughs> hold them up side by side. And if one is read by especially an upbeat female sounding voice, people will automatically show irritation uh, about mm -hmm. that particular character. So I think Timey has done a lot of great things in this world. And Jeb, I love your point about representation with her as well. And I really do hope that we get to explore what all of this could mean for her from a technological standpoint, um, you know, the role that she has played in all of this uh, from the beginning um, and the own growth that she's had as a young person who's having to learn how to deal with what could be a lifelong illness. I think that's all incredible material and it should be explored and it's wonderful and I'm so excited. So fingers crossed. Uh, no, exactly. Yeah, good. Good fucking talk. <laughs> so I got a massive swear right there. That's good. I'm loving I just love this whole like what this podcast brings. It's so good. Every week it just is. We just have these me awesome, meaningful conversations, which are so like people just don't have. They just don't have these conversations. They just don't on podcasts. They don't have this is why this is why you're here stream. This is why you're here chat people live. <laughs> It's it's so it's so organic and just genuine and awesome. It's it's awesome. We just ah. well, this is why like a light bringer. You bring light on certain topics that don't idea. want to be lit, and you know, like mental mm. health. Oh no, let's not talk about mental health. Bram is just bitchy. That's not true. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, but we. I don't think we've had that conversation before. So that it takes other people sometimes to. And you know, I I do this as a like I'm doing this as a job. I've never thought about that really specifically with him. And I like you know, it takes other people to to like you know bring extra things to the yeah. conversation and and it's good and that's that's why we it's nice to have <laughs> people on you know um yeah good stuff awesome okay we're getting we're getting on time wise um let me see if there's anything else um and in terms of like 
this this guild and community kind of thing that I'm trying to push forward and that there's well I'm not going to be the only one pushing this forward I'm going to like there's just going to be loads of us doing this hopefully um running events over different regions like no big pressure or anything else as well as like just a little bit of a like again I said this last week this is going to be something going to be building soon uh with people um and I think like for end of dragons it might be a good time to kind of you know be like have this new insertion of just these kinds of attitudes you know of like representation and inclusivity and stuff like that so definitely keep your eyes out if you want to be involved people that goes yeah, for me, anyone me. <laughs> that was good. a good concept Excellent. i saw your tweet i've already yeah, like yeah, we've, 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 i've been talking about this with rook i've been talking about this with other people as well and like you know there's there's definitely things we can do and i feel like we could bring different new new peeps into the game as well in the community who would for sure love this kind of stuff um okay let me see. Uh, trailer thoughts. Uh, gameplay featured. Yes. Something that we were talking about last week. Cool. Thumbs up. Uh, Hollow Way over. Already talked about that. Talked about Aether Blades. Large scale event. The Leviathan thing at the end of the trailer. I'm actually so excited. What? That thing looks so cool. Is it an underwater world boss? I don't know, but I love its design. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm like, so excited about Good. it. <laughs> Finally, getting some use out of a very old model. Yeah, Everybody where is your that from? Scary underwater weapon. It where was data that? mined when it when Gilworth you first released, but they never used the model in game. <gasps> really? So, I had no idea. It's been in the files, but they just never used it. There is a skeleton of it in Desert Highlands after you go, when you're doing that story mission with like Balthazar and like the skeleton is in like the de flat desert area, it, there's a little skeleton of it, but we've never seen one living <laughs> on Tyria yet. Amazing, okay. It's interesting how it was in the game files, but it wasn't like, yeah. Yeah, they never used it. Oh, oh granted, they didn't use a lot of, uh, Zaitan's army too. There were some very interesting models there. Yeah, no, I mean that, that's style. I mean, there's loads of stuff like that in other games as well. But I think they get kind of get pulled. But I don't know <gasps> if they leave it. I just thought because like Zaitan, what if they? I I'm remembering a couple of the really cool like almost wizardy like sage Zaitan models that never were used. I was like, oh, could we see those? I mean, if they brought this back from all that time ago. Maybe we'll yeah. see some updated Zaitan models that we've never seen Good before. Point. <laughs> so how does everyone feel about underwater massive events? Is that exciting? I'm down. We never down. really get them, so... Yeah, it's gonna be different. Yeah, people yeah. like to harp on the underwater combat. And there's, there's valid discussion in there to be had, for sure. But the fact that Guild Wars 2 even has an interactive, fully immersive underwater element to it, I really appreciate that they try to do that. And so to have such a water theme in this expansion and then not have some kind of water event would have felt very bizarre to me. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. absolutely. No, exactly. And it's, it's, the thing is about the underwater combat, and, and I get it why in PvP that we don't use it much and it's annoying, but... The fact that it's actually like it just brings up new illustri like there's new graphics, there's new abilities, there's loads of same stuff. It's like yeah, yeah we we I'm gonna start getting us. Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> I I re read Discord and then my brain was going off at the same time. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was saying it in my head. Um, but basically, yes, underwater combat looks very cool and is actually fun. It doesn't have to be balanced to play PvE events because PvE events are going to get done no matter what. It doesn't matter. Like, you can you can have fun while doing, like, something unique and different, and I think that's okay. Um, other than that, is there anything else anyone wanted to mention about um, anything today before we go? Mental health section, so I'm good to go now. <laughs> Yeah. Um, here's the big one. February 28th. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> the release date. It's true. You that's true. To go. I was like, like you know. <laughs> Chat, we need, you need to get that as an I emote. Know. You do know that right now, don't you? You need to get that. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. So. There is. There is. We, the do, we have a finger guns emote. That's it's, true. It's a little finger gun you, can, the you can do the alternate version. 
of That's emotes true. with the little hand. Wait, 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 I got it. Oh my gosh. There you go. <laughs> that is my dwarf is. emote. <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me see if I can find another one. So <laughs> this is it now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you one. Perfection. Thank you, Thank you all for using the pride Jebro. I appreciate it. Thank you. I have many pride <laughs> emotes. It's all good. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about that, Rookery? Good. I feel really good about it, actually. Everybody's teasing, <laughs> like, oh, it's the very last day of February. And I'm like, thank the gods it's the very last day of yeah, February. I have so much that I want to do and need to do this month. So many things that I'm so excited about with the launch. So many things to prepare. Like, there's so much going on this month and other games that are coming out as well, which I know a lot of people have yeah. been worried about. Like, which one will I pick and how will I play it? So I'm super glad it's coming out February 28th. And I will be playing it and enjoying it and hopefully get all my content done before then that I want to. So, 100%. and eating noodles. Yes, the noodles. And eating it's noodles. so weird. We'll get a release. Well, we won't have a release date. People will be like, oh, it's the end of the world. We get a release date and people are like, it's the end of the world. I don't get it. But I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, same. I'm so excited too. Okay. Well, How about me... you, Jebro? Did you like that date? Do you feel good about it? How do you feel, Jebro? I mean, I'm not like surprised or anything. It's good. Like, it is good. <laughs> yes, that is good. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of the same as well. To be honest, like, I mean, <laughs> at the moment with internship, gaming time is very, very small, and like trying to produce content and everything else is very difficult. So I'm streaming three days a week at the moment. It's gone to like. It went from like so many hours to like this time and like the podcast and then two days. So it's at the moment I'm, I've got so much going on that I'm I'm just excited to have an expansion. That's going to be cool. And there's just a lot of games coming out this month as well that I do want to play yeah. and enjoy. There's like Lost Ark. Yeah, there's Lost Ark next week, which is coming out, which I'm kind of excited for. Um, not like, you know, I'm massively hyped for, but like, I think it will be cool. Um... And there's other bits and bobs, you know, there's there's a lot, there's a lot this month. There's like Elden Ring towards the end of the month, I might not play that, but I'll watch some people play it, hopefully. There's loads of fun stuff. So it's, it, February, March is pretty ridiculous in terms of games. Um, not normally this time of year is ever this packed, but you know, all of the schedules from like COVID and stuff, it's been like, cool, here we go then. But like, it's a good sign of, of uh, you know, the future of, I guess just games coming out and us gang stuff and you know COVID kind of just mm, taking a step back. I'm not going to say retreating and going away because it's not going to go away and it's it's going to be here for a long mm. time. But like you know, and the effects of that. But um, you know, it's good to see that we're able to get some of the stuff we like and enjoy in the world back. So that's always good. Um, but yeah, I think generally I'm excited. I'm just I'm also kind of looking at who to raid oh there we go one sassy cat there you go that's the one they're good people um but otherwise they got a free shout out during the podcast just then before we've even finished uh, <laughs> i should send him a bell for that <laughs> nice we don't get a cut damn it Hey, you gotta think about these things. It's ad free advertising. Um, it's not just on the live stream, it's on in multiple places as well. Anyway, please make sure you go and follow everyone that is here. But first of all, they're gonna do a little bit of an outro to tell you about the things they do and where they do it. And also, if they could get a potential goodie bag when they exit a party, um, what would be the <laughs> <laughs> what would be the main item that you would like to have if you lived in Tyria? Kruf. It has oh. to be small. It can't be a car or anything. Okay. Have you, um, do you not have this in America? Is that not a thing? You know, when you go to a birthday cars? party no, when you're it a is kid a thing. and you it's, have like oh. a oh, yeah, little plastic a bag. bag, a gift I bag, you and you leave. I about cars. I was like, we have cars, Jebro. Um, we have cars in the United I a, States. I have a car as well in America. Yes. Oh, you do. <laughs> you I do. Mean, my head's like you falling off my head. My head is very slippery. I'm um, curious. I do a lot of YouTube stuff. 
I do videos and other things. And I might actually be covering some Lost Ark here soon. But uh, also stream here on Twitch Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursday, Friday, and sometimes Saturdays. That's so much fun. Come watch me be mediocre. It's a lot of, uh, it's a hoot and a holler. But uh, as to what I would have in that goodie bag, I believe you have asked this before. And I said sexual health products. But I will actually say oh, yeah, this time awesome. around because it's Tyria, I would say uh, I mean, they, a teleport mean? to friend. A teleport to friend would be very oh. useful. That's true. Okay, cool. A teleport to you know, friend. If I'm going home a little tipsy, you know, I, I just <laughs> boom in someone's house. <laughs> you could hook it, boom, boom into my house any day, crew. <laughs> Thank you so much. Same here. <laughs> so we can watch Blade Runners together. There yes. you go. Go watch Blade Runner. Uh, you will not regret it, by the way. Then you can watch you the second one, which was giving me high expectations. It's it's <laughs> it's, it's it's literally a film. Like it's a film. It's not just a movie. It's a movie. It's a film. Is that what it is? It is, it is like no. It's a Ooh. film. It's a film, Rook. <laughs> it's a fel It's so good. It is literally one of my favorite. Movies. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Trust me. <laughs> I trust you. Um. Rook, next. Hey everybody, I'm Rook. <laughs> and you can find me at twitch.tv rookery, R-O-O-K-U-R-I. You can also find me on YouTube, Rookery. Uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere I make content, Rookery. Uh, I'm also a co-host on Aetherite Radio, a Final Fantasy XIV podcast. That's usually the day after this one. Um, but I'm around doing stuff. Find me online. Twitter, you can find me, Rookery underscore. That's the only exception. And what do I want? Um, I want a permanent baby or reen forever. I just want her to be baby and I'm gonna play fetch with her for all time. That's it. It's an expensive goodie bag, that one. Yes, give me a baby dragon. Thank yeah, you, biological Thank you. wonder. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> Kruf got a teleport to friend, which you get like all the time, and Rook wants a flipping baby dragon. I mean, every single one of us here has a baby dragon, correct? So I don't think what I'm asking is Wait, all that we? rare. Yes, because they're you all didn't get in the all, You didn't get that. Yeah. Oh, right, they played sorry. Gem <laughs> like, yeah, what? Anna, Anna sent it over to <laughs> What version of Guild Wars 2 have <laughs> you been playing, Jeb? I don't The adulterated one. The, um... <laughs> and, and I guess... <laughs> and if you want to go think about that and run some fan fiction, then you're more than welcome to. I'm sure it's out there. Um... <laughs> And no Please shame. Do like, not I'm... write fan fiction about my sweet baby or <laughs> No, <Rina>. not that. You can write fan fiction for her when she a grown adult, but don't you listen to Jebro? Oh, She's boy. pure. Unless the fan fiction is Rook plays fetch with Orie for five hours. Please do not. Fan fiction doesn't always have to be rude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's true. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> oh, boy. Rather. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> sorry, I was just imagining the fan fiction. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. Rava Rava. <laughs> okay. You can catch me on Twitch uh, almost every day. Um, I do something a bit special um, every Friday. Unfortunately, it's quite late for uh, my American friends, but I do what's called mental health streams where we either play a game that's quite mental health related, like Gris or journey or or i do what's called mental health map completion where like i just do map completion in guild wars 2 and we just chat and discuss some things like to realize that it, to pretty much give a safe space to people and know that they're not weak for feelings they're not weak for crying they're not weak for having issues and struggling like we tend to beat ourselves up so much and i hate that and we're our worst enemy so i try to promote this this way of thinking of like the things that you tell yourself, would you tell them to someone you really care about? Like, you know, we tend to say, I'm going to swear, but I'm shit. I suck. And, and would you say that to someone you really love? No. So I try to like showcase this in my mental health stream when we discuss some of the issues and to know that it's okay not to be okay sometimes. And yeah, I have also YouTube, uh, and Twitter and whatnot. And, uh, if I were to put something in a gift bag, it would probably be a, a little commander tag with the kitty ears so that I can command some raids. Ugh, cute. 
Rob is so right. cute and good and pure. Debra, have Rava back again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, we will have Rava back again. That was very nicely put, indeed. Yes. Do you keep doing that stuff. We need more of it. We need more of it on Twitch specifically. I am very happy with how this podcast went. It was very, very good. It was very, very yeah. fun. Compared uh, to the other ones that are garbage, this I mean, one was pretty. <laughs> yeah. our, we always our, our have good podcasts. Garbage. <laughs> we always have good podcasts. But it's always good when we have the mental health stuff. And I think there will. I think I'll have to have like a, maybe a specific Guild Wars Two mental health podcast. Feels like a like that should be yeah. a thing I do at some point in oh. time like to cut out like someone apparently has been doing mental health completion and he got called out for it saying that he copied me please don't think that's copying me if you do anything that is mental health related it's not copying it's important we need to talk about it more we need it yeah. to become not a stigma and like I, I i fortunately i was in the stream when that happened and i was like he didn't copy me like i'm so happy he's doing it so please don't hesitate try and promote mm -hmm. mental health it's so important yeah it's not about it's not about like who's like they're a really good person and like you know they're 2 pma and they're trying to appeal to a certain audience it's like well yeah you're trying to appeal to a certain amount of people you're just trying to get the message out that's what it's about Which, so more people yeah trying that, yeah. to break a stigma Absolutely. that's like oh you're you're feeling things or you're weak fuck off. like you know that's not true that's not how it goes mm, that's so, yeah. true no it's okay that's good <laughs> And on that note, we're going to end the show. And finally, me. Yes, I will outro me before I forget. <laughs> Flip now. I always do that. Uh, Jebra Uni <laughs> on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all the things. I started to put more clips on Facebook. Even TikTok now you can find me on. But that's just clips from the stream, which are awesome and funny, obviously. Uh, I randomly attacked someone in Red Dead Redemption 2 by accident because I pressed triangle instead of the other button. So that was not my fault. <laughs> yeah. If anybody doesn't know, Jebro is so funny. No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Jebro, you got red to film. <laughs> Damn, we're coming in with a shade. Drag her, slay her, sipping on that true tea, honey. It's like you're holding that one for four hours, Rook. <laughs> I was waiting. Oh, man, that was great. By the end, that was good. It was good. I will. I will. I have been slain, but at the same time, Kruf, what? I <laughs> know. No. You know what I mean? Any Drag of... her. Slay her. <laughs> That's exactly the meme. <laughs> Sipping on that trouty hunting. <laughs> anyway, I just realized it was so awkward when it was quiet. Anyway. Hey, I don't know that one. I can't know all of them. Okay. <laughs> I will. I know it now. Because <laughs> I got slayed. <laughs> Apparently. I'm sorry. Please continue your outro. Yes. During my outro as well. That's pretty much like a, like a good <laughs> idea. I do have a memory like a goldfish, that's true. Although that's technically not true because goldfish actually don't have great memories because that's a myth. Uh, <laughs> I know what you mean though. Um, okay. Outro music. It's going to be Lelement of Lion's Arch. Um, <laughs> If you have enjoyed this podcast, make sure you check back in future to uh, listen to it. Because at the moment, it's definitely weekly. Um, on a Friday at 12 p.m. Pacific, uh, 7 a.m. Australian time on the East Coast, I guess. Uh, I'm Yeah, because it would change a bit, I suppose. Um, other times, you can work it out. But... Twitch.tv slash Jebrouni every week, every 12 p.m. Pacific. Come watch it. It's going to be on Anchor. It's going to be on iTunes, Spotify, all the things. Um, I, I'm, I'm having a serious time of thinking about taking it off Spotify because of recent things that have been happening. So I might talk about that in the future. Um, but in terms of the podcast today thank you to our guests please make sure you take the time to click a follow on all of them and if you're live here in the stream go do it now because you have no excuse easy peasy um 
their links are in the chat as well thank you very much for watching i am excited about the expansion we're all excited yeah excited about the expansion thank you very much indeed and we will see you next time if you do want to support me specifically as well you can find a link in the um description where you can support on spotify etc etc you can also buy uh, the expansion as well from uh, myself or our guests and also subscribe to the channel and do all the things see you next time on Lightbringers Podcast, episode 37. Sash. Sash? <laughs> Sass Incorporated. Over side of sweet chicken nugget. Nom nom. Yeah. Chicken nugget. <laughs> Add some chicken nuggets in there, because why not? <laughs>